Big Brother, mainstream media, government cover-ups. You want answers? Well, so does he. He's Alex Jones on the GCN Radio Network. And now, live from Austin, Texas, Alex Jones. Last night on MSNBC, Rachel Maddow covered the Veterans March that took place over the weekend. And in stereotypical mainstream fashion, she deliberately distorted and falsified the facts surrounding the protest. First, she made it look like the Veterans March was organized by the Tea Party, led by Ted Cruz and Sarah Palin. And she said it was a small demonstration and once again pulled out the race card, insinuating that the veterans rally was somehow racially motivated. Vaguely threatening but incoherent is a patented thing with these folks. It has never, ever held them back. Like, say, this guy who brought the Confederate flag to the rally to wave it in front of the White House. Yes, an African-American family lives in that house now. But hey, I think the idea here was more about waving a Confederate flag in front of a house where a black family lives than it was about anything specific related to the Marines. And of course, they kept showing footage of this one guy who was out there with his Confederate flag, but failed to show the incredible amount of veterans who showed up, including, yes, black veterans. And that's because most everyone is extremely outraged right now about the Obama administration putting up barricades and denying veterans access to our nation's memorials. Y'all need to perform the Constitution you took the oath to do. These veterans served our country. They put their life in line on the line for you, for our country. You're going to block their access to the memorial? Surely you got more dignity and respect than that. You gonna spit on their graves as well when they die? But Rachel Maddow's lying to her audience got worse. She claimed that the veterans, for example, were throwing the barricades at the White House, which did not happen. They then picked up the barricades that were around the closed World War II memorial and dragged the barricades over to the White House and hurled the barricades at the White House. But the big lie was when she told her audience that the police were not getting paid. Then the protesters went home, so the police, who through no fault of their own are working without being paid, the police had to pick up those barriers, drag them back to where they came from, and keep working their shifts without being paid because of the shutdown that these folks made happen. Wait a minute, let's stop right there. Notice they keep showing a video loop of a veteran who is pushing one of the riot police backwards. What MSNBC failed to show their audience was the fact that it was the riot police who lashed out at veterans first. You can clearly see this cop pushing the veteran before the veteran pushes back. MSNBC deliberately edited that part out of the video. And as far as the cops not being paid during the shutdown, it's on record that all patrol and riot police are seen as essential. They're all on duty and they're all getting paid. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. A little backup. So the police that are getting yelled at there are working without pay while the shutdown goes on. And working without pay includes now getting screamed at for being at work. Is there any threat? Is there any law being broken? And there were a lot of World War II veterans that showed up for the march over the weekend. And no World War II veteran should be denied access to the Iwo Jima Memorial or the World War II Memorial or to any other memorial for that matter. And the fact that they were denied access should be a wake-up call to us all. The enemy is no longer foreign. It is domestic. So remember, you can't trust MSNBC, you can't trust Rachel Maddow, and don't fall for the race card. Those memorials belong to us, each and every one of us. And as long as they're out there putting up barricades, it's up to all of us to get out there, support our veterans, tear those barricades down. That's right. And send a clear message to Obama. All right, Obama that was uh, Darren McGrain's report. About to back down. It is Friday. We're live. We're going to come back with all the top stories and more. Gerald Salente is coming up. By the way, they only laid off non-essential police. All those cops were being paid. Now they're being given raises. That's out uh, in the news today. So again, more BS from the corporate media. I am your host, Alex Jones, and we're going to have Gerald Salente, the trends forecaster, who's been very upset about the J.P. Morgan 
chase announcements to restrict most of their customers being able to wire money out of the country. Money's allowed to come in, though. They just want to restrict the money going out. Uh, and, of course, uh, restricting how much cash uh, total uh, activity you can have in a month down to $50,000. That's deposits. That's withdrawals total. Folks uh, tended to think that that was going to be all at one time. Uh, no, we're talking about total. And other banks uh, are now making similar announcements. We'll either have reports out on that today or over the weekend at Infowars.com. In fact, I've already confirmed it uh, a few days ago, but I want to codify it with some other big banks and uh, what some of the bank executives have been told locally that I have uh, had a chance to talk to and make sure I don't put anything out uh, that exposes some of our sources before we drop some other big bombshells about what is being looked at, what is being discussed. Uh, outside of the debt limit uh, crisis and the 16-day uh, government shutdown that, that, that had the federal government prepared to not send out the digital transfers to the uh, EBT cards run by Chase again. That was set under the control of the Agriculture Department to begin in November, um, even though it was seen as essential funding and actually funded to a great extent, they weren't going to do it. They played a lot of games with this. All of the federal law enforcement that is seen as essential, 83% of them, um, the source on that's the Washington Post, you can look it up, uh, stayed on. The Capitol Police, the Capitol SWAT team, the uh, Secret Service, the park rangers that were policed, they all stayed on. It was administrative people that actually got laid off for 16 days. And now it's being reported today. We have the congressional C-SPAN clip up on Infowars.com. This just broke minutes ago via Fox News. Kurt Nemo blurbed it at Infowars.com. It pays to work for the government. Furloughed and workers to get paid twice. They're to get paid the unemployment benefits and uh, the back pay. And so there you go. And, and again, when Rachel Maddow gets up there and lies and says, you know, the federal uh, police having uh, veterans attack them, and then she edited the police attacking the veterans and the veterans fighting back. We exposed that, and then she went on to say, they're not being paid. And, of course, technically, you could go find uh, 13 to 14 percent, some cases 70 percent, uh, of the police that were not being paid. But they're not police on duty. Just absolute deception. I found a lot of other corporate uh, propaganda articles uh, out there um, saying, again, indeed, they weren't being paid. You had to really dig to find out that that was disinformation. Because this is the culture of lies we live in where the Pentagon publicly starting a few months ago announced they are engaged in lying to the American people in the media. Now, that's been going on for a long time. Um, but now it's becoming mainstream news. Speaking of that, the new head of Homeland Security... Uh, is a Pentagon official, and that's very fitting because uh, Homeland Security, uh, on record, is a fifth branch of the U.S. military above Congress, above the law, via COG, continuity of government, uh, and is the basically the system uh, to absorb the old republic. If you take the body snatcher analogy, it's the pod that they lay beside you when you go to sleep that then you die and then every your, 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 your essence and, and, and your genetics and the way you look is transferred over to the pod that basically absorbs you and eats you uh, during the night. And so that's what Homeland Security is, is the loving pod uh, laid down next to us. Or to use a road analogy, we have the old republic that they've turned into a toll road as they fund the construction of their new New World Order super slave highway. And then as they begin to force us over to the slave highway completely with the two systems running parallel, they're now beginning to dismantle uh, the old republic and the last vestiges of it are being flushed down uh, the obozo o vomit uh, toilet. Because as Conrad the Constitution, one of my favorite cartoon characters on YouTube says, we know the toilets all lead to the wine house. Uh, so a little attempt at gallows humor there, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, we're going to be getting into all of that today. Also, the Democrats push to take up amnesty, say Boner. Uh, Boehner will cave in. Well, of course he wants to cave in. He's run by the globalist. The big bankers that run the Republican leadership, they wrote the health care bill. It's a giant tax to private banks offshore that own the insurance companies. It was uh, Boehner and the other blue blood Republican leadership that lambasted the Tea Party and Ted Cruz and Rand Paul and myself and Matt Drudge and 
Glenn Beck and anybody else that just didn't completely say, let's just completely bankrupt the nation and let foreign banks cheat all these dumbed down, desperate people that, that are being conned. You know, we've read the bill. We know what it does. We know it's not meant to work day one. By the way, it's now come out in mainstream news, U.S. News and World Report and others today, that indeed, uh, Mike Adams also broke this down, it's using foreign British national health care code that's not even been paid for, and it's not even meant to work, and it is a data mining site. It is totally fake. In fact, Kurt Nemo has the article up on Infowars.com. More people signed up for Mars trip than for Obamacare. They've had folks that have signed up for what I believe is basically a suicide mission uh, to go to Mars and back. I mean, I'd say it's one out of 20 that anyone would survive and make it back to uh, terra firma, uh, just researching it. And so no wonder they're volunteers. And I admire folks that would volunteer for that, true trailblazers like William Barrett Travis, who knew exactly what he was doing to found the great nation of Texas. But, uh, I mean, there's such a thing as a, being a man of destiny. I understand that. But uh, more people have signed up for the Mars trip than for Obamacare. No one's been able to sign up. Uh, you had a lot of folks that told the media in polls they thought they'd signed up. But weeks later, we now know no one has signed up through the, the Internet. You know, that sometimes if CNN tries over and over, ABC News does, they get a call from the Healthcare Federal Exchange as a stunt, and then a phone number is given. And then they will uh, help you sign up. And I think one lady in Tennessee, hers went from her deductible from 1000 to 13000 Her husband from a couple thousand, I think it was 5000 And then uh, the overall premiums doubled. I mean, just an example. I mean, you see that. Everyone I know, including Geraldo Rivera, that's been a pretty big liberal, he had to admit it's a scam on my show. And uh, that it has doubled uh, himself and his six employees. It has doubled, doubled uh, his uh, insurance. So that's a great deal. That makes it's what's called the Affordable Care Act. I think they ought to call the guillotine the life extension unit. You, and you could have people having their heads chopped off. And if you told a trendy, oh, no, no, that will extend your life another 20 years. But it looks like it's cutting their head off. Don't be a conspiracy theorist. Did you sign up for the Nigerian email? You're going to get five million free. Just give me five thousand. Just go stick your head in that. But blood spraying twenty feet. I see their head rolling around with the eyes open, the mouth open, gasping. Well, the head does stay alive for about sixty seconds. I mean, oh, I'm sorry. Uh, I mean, no, no, no. That's the life extension happening. That's the life extension. I'm serious. You tell a trendy that they'd stick their head in a guillotine and pull the rope themselves with pleasure. So, you want to be gang raped? You are. You are God. Any trendy moves here from New York City or California and can live next to a 200-acre ranch, they hear gunshots, you're going to jail. <laughs> I don't care where you live in Texas. You can live in South Texas on a ranch, the King Ranch. It's, you know, 100,000 acres. You fire a weapon, a trendy hears, you're going to jail. They rule America now, not you. And by the way, I'm going to get into all this news I mentioned. But I tell you, I want to salute the trendies. I want to give folks a document cam shot of their watching here on TV and show you how the trendy coward rules Earth for now until they've taken over on uh, via the welfare system. Just like the illegals are pouring in by the tens of millions a year to be given the free welfare, the free having the babies to bankrupt the country and then to vote to take the guns. I'm supposed to be friendly and see it as the new civil right and go, oh, of course, absolutely unlimited worldwide come to America and get free health care and free everything because only they get the free health care because it was already there as charity care. Now let's continue. Police shut down San Francisco Union Square after suspicious device found. And again, folks, they're driving down the wages. They want to make us live like in China. And, and we're going to live like that with suicide nets and everything else because, well, you're trendy. I mean, you wanted affordable care. You wanted the Patriot Act. It's so patriotic. You wanted the new freedom initiative. It's so freedom-oriented. But, but, but shifting gears to how almost everyone I know that lives in a rural area now has had the police called on them and in many cases are arrested. Just letting you know there's a reign of terror going on, uh, just where I, even where I live in central Texas. Police shut down San Francisco Union Square after suspicious device found. Turned out it was a paper bag that had blown out of a vehicle. This is an example of the total fear-mongering that I thought I would just mention. But they always respond like it's serious to play along with the hysteria. Let's go further. 
water supply cut off after man urinates in reservoir. He was seen stumbling around with friends, reportedly drinking beer. Uh, CBS News is reporting on this, and I've got the other reports on it. And they were just sitting around drinking some beer fishing. Uh, the surveillance cameras saw him pee in the water, so they shut the giant reservoir down. Just as a power trip to train everyone. Folks, the reservoir is full of fish poo, uh, runoff, drug runoff from, from sewage, everything. But this is all about when they say you roll around in a fetal position flopping in fear. See a paper bag? Shut down the city. See a neighbor putting a gun in the car? Call the police. He goes to jail. See somebody pee-pee in a giant lake? Shut down the lake. And they actually pumped, listen to this, a large portion of the lake out to get rid of the pee-pee. Uh, now, now, folks... If you eat a candy bar, it's got several grams of cockroaches in it on record. Under law, it's all authorized. Maggots are in the ground beef, everything. Look it up. Oh, but someone pee-peed. But see, it's all about hysteria. Let's continue here. SWAT teams respond to Lyons Township North High School. Teacher thought they heard gunfire that might have been a backfire. Total hysteria, kids with their hands up, hours of shutdown, foaming at the mouth. Is this land of the free home of the brave? A man was seen dumping out his wife's ashes, so they shut down an entire area and a mall, hyperventilating in total fear. This is mind control. The government shut down 16 days later, gone. Federal workers to get their back pay. On top of the unemployment, the feds say they can keep that. Um, really amazing. And uh, most federal workers are being given raises as the average wages of the American citizen goes down. I, I want to say something about immigration and what they're warming up to try to do right now. Immigration is an important part of any nation. And I believe in legal, lawful immigration and think that America needs new blood and different ideas and that it helps empower our country, undoubtedly. As a business owner, and I don't see this as a business, but business is the lifeblood of this country, but I have to run it as a business because I'm free market. I fund myself. I know the type of hardworking know-how that people from other nations like China, Mexico, uh, you name it, can bring. I know that any industrialized, wealthy nation becomes decadent, has a lot of lazy people. But I'll tell you this at the same time, there's a lot of hardworking people in this country that are some of the smartest, most inventive folks in the world. We are still the most inventive country on the planet. And the criminal government sits there siphoning it off. And the multinational corporations, that when they have a captured population, it looks like Mexico City, it looks like Beijing, China, it looks like Calcutta, India. They will drive your wages down to one cent an hour if they can. They will have you living in the street with your children starving to death. And this isn't socialism I'm talking about as the answer. This is the opposite. This is demanding quality, demanding a high standard of living, demanding service in the economy, and you raise the level. The globalists know this. A rising tide raises all ships. They want an artificial system where they pick the winners and losers to make you very poor so they can politically control everyone and only give government and corporate contracts to their friends. This is about hegemonic control. And the globalists are all on record. Just like I told you Obamacare wasn't designed to work and was designed to wreck health care and make an already corrupt system 10 times worse, you now see it happen. Just like I told you they were secretly torturing people 10 years ago, it came out years later. Just like in 1996, how many years ago was that? 16 years ago. I told you that the globalist were openly using the NSA to spy on everyone via the backbones and told you the name of the programs and the name of the systems from my telecom whistleblowers. We had people as big as Snowden on my show in 1996. They weren't on. They would literally, I'd be going to do some rodeo, you know, live event, do my local radio show at the rodeo, and some guy would go, I work for one of the telecoms. Look at these documents. And it would just all be there. The, the rooms, how they all ran it through. I'm on record telling you about all this. A decade before the uh, whistleblower came out five, six years ago from AT&T and said, look, we are the NSA. So I know what I'm talking about. Please, if you're a new listener, just go research what we've broken down. 100%. The open borders are about driving down wages. That's why government gives preferential treatment, medically, welfare, you name it. It came out in AP, again, about seven years ago. I covered the story probably 20 times on air. 
something like uh, banking heads as they give extra help to immigrants, to, to illegal immigrants, I think was the headline, Associated Press, and it said, we actually at uh, Bank of America, it was Bank of America executive, we don't even make the illegals have any ID. We just let them create an identity. We trust them. They're good folks. And, uh, you know, we give them credit and help them get a house. And the government gives them extra welfare. Came out last year, the IRS in Austin, but also all over the country, lets per address hundreds of millions of dollars go and no one gets arrested. That's because they're using illegals as mafia fronts for the big banks to launder the hundreds of millions in fake tax returns, tax uh, refunds. In fact, in Austin, I think it was 87 million went to one household. That's sh show TV viewers that, guys. Type uh, one address got 80 plus million in fake uh, tax refunds. In Austin, 80 plus million. And I'll be honest with you, I had IRS whistleblowers at the big IRS center in South Austin, just a mile from where I'm at, come to me months before, and I couldn't even understand the data they were giving me. I couldn't even understand what I was being shown. And I didn't even go with it because I just couldn't believe it. And I wasn't about to publish people's addresses and stuff that were getting these tens of mil. Uh, and then later it still came out in the AP. That's good. My point is, is that that's how corrupt this is. So that's what the amnesty is about. There it is. Report IRS at 46 million in refunds. That's a different headline. 23,000 unauthorized aliens at one Atlanta address. Yeah, it was 80-something mil here in Austin, 100 mil somewhere else in memory serves. We'll be back. Stay with us. We'll give the number out. It is Friday. We'll be back this Sunday, Lord willing, 4 to 6 p.m. Central, live, ladies and gentlemen. I'll be down in San Antonio, uh, open carrying in defiance of tyranny down there where they have an ordinance saying you can't have an open rifle, even though it's state law, you can, with thousands of other Texans. And the police chief has said in the newspaper that he's not going to arrest people and that, quote, we're all on the same side. Well, that's good. You should move for the city to repeal that unconstitutional law and let citizens defend themselves because criminals are always going to have guns like Chicago, where it is like a death race 2000 in many areas. And many other areas of Chicago are nice, but only because they're on the suburbs and have rights to own guns or a larger police force. Ladies and gentlemen, there is so much to cover today, but I want to give the toll-free number out so that you have a chance to join us here on the broadcast on this Friday ahead of Gerald Salente joining us to look at all the big uh, trends. He predicted last year in his Trends Journal, I think it was the fall issue just about a year ago, that you would see the dollar devaluation by this year, middle of this year. Now it's happened. Uh, and he also said that you would see uh, a lowering of our credit rating continue. Dollar slips as Fed worries continue. The Wall Street Journal reports Treasury yields fall as investors focus on effects of government shutdown. So there is that report, my friends. We're going to be uh, breaking more of that down. And, of course, we've been talking about this since yesterday. There's no actual debt ceiling right now. That's right, ladies and gentlemen, uh, um, it's unlimited. But you, know, you heard Obama, increasing the debt does not increase the debt. I mean, everybody knows that. It's the people worried about a big debt that are the troublemakers endangering us. That's what Obama has actually said hundreds of times. We've played the clips here many times. That a debt increase is not a debt increase, and those that don't want it are the ones that are endangering, endangering our credit. There's no actual debt ceiling right now. The fiscal deal passed by Congress on Wednesday evening to reopen the government and get around 16.4 trillion limit on borrowing doesn't actually increase the debt limit it just temporarily suspends enforcement of it that means americans have no idea how much the debt their government is racking up between now and february 7th which is what they love by the way folks again three months of this year it's actually more than three months because i was looking it up almost four months of uh, this year uh, they just suspended it because they couldn't get a vote in the house and the senate on the debt increase, so they just did a procedural thing, didn't worry about it. And the reason I keep repeating that is Obama and the globalists held everybody hostage, like Greece, like Iceland, like Ireland, like Nigeria, like Brazil, like Mexico, as the globalists have done over and over again. And they said that if you don't do this and give us an unlimited debt increase, and if you don't give us everything we want, including hundreds of pork barrel packages, oh yeah, they demanded more 
fact, there was some talk of demanding amnesty be added on uh, to the uh, whole piece of legislation, but that got shot down very quickly. Uh, so now they're back at that. So, so that's what that was all about, and it's all very funny. And Obama's not there to be good in the history books. He's not there for you to like him. In the end, he wants you to know he cons you. It's all about conning you and running game on everyone, and they're certainly doing that. So we'll talk about that with Gerald Salente coming up. The toll-free number to join us, the phones are now open, 800-259-9231. 800-259-9231. We will get you up and on the air today uh, on this Friday Worldwide uh, Edition. Now, again, getting back to immigration, there's always paradoxes in this world. It's not either or. There are always gray areas in complex systems. That doesn't mean, you know, should you go shoot a small child in the head just for fun as a gang initiation? We know that that's evil. We know that that's wrong. We know that that is a fraud. We know that that is uh, evil. Most of us don't want to do that. But so, so that's black and white. But in the case of geopolitical movements, migration, immigration, politics, welfare, all of this, I mean, you want the 30 plus million people that have come here, most of them hard working people leaving a collapsing third world system. You, you know, you want them to do well. You want them to have an American dream. You want them to have good jobs. You want them to have a future. But here's the problem. Here's the big issue that we're dealing with uh, time and time again uh, with this whole situation. The globalists are using those folks as a set piece to be brought in as a client state and to be an in-between group that they can use to launder money, carry out criminal activities, you know, send tens of millions of dollars to individual addresses, uh, and then nobody gets in trouble tying it into big banks that launder the drug cartel money. They need to use the illegals as a political voting block to be given driver's license uh, to vote illegally and take uh, the uh, former population's guns. Third world populations are so poor and labor is so low that no one has any bargaining power. You have a tiny, tiny, tiny one-tenth of a percent elite. You've got about a 2% servant class of the elite. And you've got 97 plus percent on record. 97 percent on record in most of these third world countries that are absolute slaves living on dirt floors. And as Ross Perot said about NAFTA and GATT, he explained that Canada had a higher standard of living than us on average back in the early 1990s. And that just after a few years in the 1980s of the U.S. having free trade with Canada and lower rates, uh, lower rates of pay, that that lowered Canadian pay. And then, and then, actually then began to lower U.S. pay because now Canada had less in trade and a lot of things happened that are complex. Then Mexico came in with NAFTA and GATT. What's happened to wages on average? They said, don't worry, it's a service economy. Now that's shutting down. This is an Agenda 21 globalist program. You don't raise up the third world under false globalism. And I've studied the economics on this. This is well known by the globalist. You don't raise up the third world or old world or second world by lowering the first world. You don't do that. You raise the first world and then have investment in the third world and then build economic development zones in the third world that then raise up the third world. I want Mexico, which is one of the most beautiful countries I've ever been to, to be, I mean, if it was nicer than Austin, Texas, and it was open, I would go live in Mexico. I don't want the borders to be shut because I don't like brown people, okay? I want the borders to be shut because I don't like the communism that the big banks have taught down there is the fake rebellion against the tyranny. They're not threatened by communism. They, they're offshore and love to work with communism as a client group. I want Mexico. I want Brazil. I want Argentina. I want Nicaragua. I want El Salvador. I want all these countries to do well. And we talk about Latin America because about 85% of all immigration into this country is Latin America. Latin America is a hell hole, okay? I mean, you know, 
Uh, my dad's been down to South America. I've been to Central America, you name it. I've seen the footage he shot down there. He described it. He's gone down there on aid missions to do free dentistry for poor children. He's been to Paraguay and you name it. He says it is so hellish. He literally kisses the ground when he gets back here. Folks, you have no idea. You have no idea. And it'd be one thing if we took hardworking people here and added them as new blood to the country. And there is some of that going on. Instead, folks, it's the crime, the gangsters, the, the people running from justice. We literally are used now to a great extent. There's some jewels in the toilet that have been dropped in here. But mainly it's like a giant... Uh, porta potty dump center. You know those trucks that pull up the porta potties and pump the porta potties out. The whole world, just like Cuba, dumped all their criminals on us. You know, with the whole Cuban crime wave. You know, that's what Scarface is about. It's a true story, at least in the general crime wave part. As a as a toilet bowl, and and the globalists love that because they're all in Switzerland, they're all in Luxembourg, they're all in Monte Carlo, they're all in the city of London within London. They all live behind giant estates with armed guards, helicopters, infrared, and they are at war with the middle class and wealth. And once they've got everybody poor, look, just like I have Lord Moncton on, and we lobbied four years ago during the whole situation with the shutdown uh, going on uh, of trying to shut down Africa, Latin America, and Asia. I lobbied to get the freer energy systems to get aid down there, technological aid. I donate money uh, in charity. I don't really talk about this a lot, but I donate to buy cows and, and donkeys and horses and uh, water purification and to pay for wells to be put in in Latin America, Africa, Philippines, you name it. And I, I, I do give. I've never really said that on air, but I mean, that's what I've done. That, that's where I tithe. I don't give it to some dirty church to teach us to turn our guns in and worship government, some Romans 13 whorehouse devil center. If I ever find a good church, I will tithe some there. But I tithe directly to Salvation Army domestically because I know over 90-plus percent of the money goes there because I've had family. They're dead now. Old, you know, old folks that my dad knew who were inventors and well-to-do folks that gave everything away to the Salvation Army and worked for them and literally lived in shacks and were the happiest people you can imagine. But the point is, is that the globalists are doing everything they can, ladies and gentlemen, to totally and completely shut down the third world just like they're shutting us down just like they told the third world in western envy oh we're going to double taxes in the west and give you the money they got the actual world government legislation that's public four years ago at copenhagen it right at doubled right at doubled one point below doubling the taxes on the third world to pay the IMF and World Bank and the bankers money to wreck them. The bankers already have unlimited money. I said I'd go to your calls, we'll go to them. I just get off on the immigration thing, it makes me so upset. We need America and the West as engines to actually build and promote industry in these countries, but not by moving our industry there, but by having economic development cooperations. That is not what NAFTA and GATT are, those are one-way streets. The wages have lowered in Mexico since NAFTA and GATT. The wages have lowered in China since all these international trade deals. L look it up. They didn't have suicide nets and robots replacing people five years ago in China, 20 years ago. They forced the farmers off their land and collectivized them like the Great Leap Forward under Mao, but a modern Great Leap Forward and a cultural revolution in the Foxcom Apple slave dens. You understand that's what they want for all of us. They, they see us as dogs, as scum. We need to use the West to jack up the third world, industrialize them. Then their birth rates will go negative, just like the West, below 2.1 replacement rate that's needed to just keep a civilization going. I don't even want to get negative rates in the third world. I want stabilization. Stabilization here. The big lie of the Royal Commission that set the whole world on its course of the modern eugenics paradigm, 1949, look it up. In England, that was adopted as U.S. law in 1973 under the State Department Memorandum 200. Look it up. It's declassified in 1991. They said, we're going to block development in the third world, use their overpopulation system as a bomb to destroy them and make them abject. Then we'll go in and clean up later and sterilize them. And we'll use that giant excess population to leverage out the West and dominate our indigenous populations that are politically dangerous to us. We need to neutralize them first. So they're annihilating the West. They're annihilating the Middle East. They're annihilating Asia. They're annihilating Africa. They're annihilating Latin America. And then they're using with giant 
Ford Foundation funded systems for 60 years telling Mexico the U.S. belongs to them and the whites are all racist and you're going to get your Oslan and you're going to get them. Why are the big banks funding all that? Because they're going to break up the country, get us all in fights with each other, use a giant welfare class to leverage out and take everybody's guns and nationalize the economy, and then we'll all be peon slaves. I said I'd go to your phone calls. It's just that I kind of get wound up in the first hours. You know, I get more tired during the second and third hour, just kind of gibber in circles. But this is what's so frustrating is that they want to destroy everybody, and they don't even really want to stabilize world population. They actually used, in some areas, overpopulation in third world areas where it's hellish, as a sucking system to economically conquer the world. They use these people as an engine of low wages to destroy the West. I mean, this is diabolical. Now the robots are gonna be coming in the next decade and phasing out the humans on record. That's not me saying that. That's all the top technocrats. And that's when they're gonna have big wars, bioweapon releases, you name it, blamed on terrorists and shut down the entire grid, shut down the entire system and bring in their planetary rule and their Elysium type program with underground bases, walled off command cities, and yes, off-world and ocean habitations that have all been announced publicly by Peter Thiel of um, PayPal uh, and, of course, uh, the folks over at Google. This is all the official plan. It's been officially adopted, and they're officially fine-tuning it. Okay, you understand what you're hearing here is the real program. So when you hear it's a civil riot and the illegals are going to be chaining themselves to everything and feeling sorry for themselves and whining and all the rest of it, th this is total destruction for everybody if this goes through. They also need the first world as a steam valve so that revolution can be exported here to be controlled by the establishment left, the authoritarian left, to bring down the old republic instead of using the revolution there to get any type of uh, new system in in the third world that the globalists don't control. So we're going to go to break and come back with Ozzy and then David and Oscar and Mike and Adam. They want to talk about stuff from all over the map. Uh, let's go ahead and jam in one right now. Ozzy, you're on the air. How you doing, Alex? I'm pretty freaked out. I see their whole world government coming into view. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty freaked out also. I wanted to bring something up that was of immediate, immediate concern to me. And it's... Uh, I just woke up this morning and I went outside and I can already see the I can see the chemtrails and they're starting to they're doing they're it's, it seems like they're actually targeting me because I'm I'm actually I'm actually one that's to speak about these things and and I've uh, I've listened to a lot of whistleblowers and stuff and these chemtrails they, that uh, they they start off as small lines but then they gradually become big clouds and then they come down it sometimes takes over a day and they can well, sir, well, sir yeah i mean if they're doing it thirty thousand feet they're targeting everybody the pilots don't know we have the patents it's added as the different aluminum dioxides barium salts the jet fuel then is aerosolized through the engines the earth is 21 to 30 percent darker globally uh because of this uh, program uh, a fellow even won a nobel prize in 91 for it it was it was implemented by 1995 in the northern hemisphere it's now being implemented in the southern hemisphere it's called geoengineering and they're darkening the earth for whatever reason it's a giant secret project the project is admitted but the details are classified bill gates heads up the project we'll be right back you know i listen to what i talk about on air sometimes and rebroadcast and it sounds totally insane but if i told you that germany was taken over in the 30s by people that wore black uniforms and skulls on their hats that they killed 20 million people and started a war, or that our own government actually funded Hitler before that on record, and that there was almost a coup d'etat in 1936 to set up a fascist state here in the United States, and the mccormick Dixon Committee documented that years later, I would say it sounded crazy, but it all happened. If I told you that there was over 2,000 declassified secret tests on U.S. military personnel, from the 1930s to the 1980s, the last time it was declassified, where they killed thousands and thousands of people with nerve gas, radiation, you name it, I would tell you that sounded crazy and isn't real, except it's public information. See, and I could talk for about five hours just giving you examples of evil the globalists are carrying out, but they know you're compartmentalized past your horizon. You know who you are, you know what's on TV, you know what's at home, you know your neighbors. You don't know what's going on in those government underground bases. You don't know what's flying around your house at night. You don't know what they're doing. And, and the thing is, they're on record doing all this. It never stopped. They're not your friends. Of course Obamacare isn't going to help you. 
They've already got you domesticated. All the free stuff was just to get you addicted. Just like a crack dealer hands out some free crack. Now he's going to put you out there on the street as a whore. And when he's done with you, he's going to shoot you in the back of the head and throw you in the lake. And you're going to thank him when he does it because you like it. Let's go ahead and talk to Oscar in Florida. You're on the air. Welcome. Hello? Yes, sir. Hey, how are you doing today? I'm doing all right. Uh, my question my question was that uh, every time I see him talking, he never talks about the United States. He's always talking about the world. I don't know what's that going on about that. That's and right. It's globalism. That. We're learning that the world runs us, and China tells us what to do, and the IMF tells us what to do, and the private Federal Reserve, not the American people. The world is our boss now. We're like a third world country being lectured. Yeah, that's true, because I called the White House, and I asked them about Obamacare, why he's not, why he's uh, got the privilege of not being in it. And they told me not, that's not enough by my business after my face is hanging with the phone. Well, that's right. There's already giant... Uh theft going on, identity theft and the wrong data being sent to insurers and total fraud. It's a giant scam. The plan was always to wreck the healthcare system. Every medical doctor we had on that studied third world countries that they've done this in in Europe to, warned us. We knew. Did we not say it was it was not going to work? And But that's it's designed to fail, like the drug war. The drug war is a huge success. Sure, there's triple the drugs on the streets and total crime, you know, in areas where the drugs are being run. That's the plan. They brought the drugs in to take over. The government runs the drugs with the big banks on record. You see what I'm saying, brother? Yes, sir. Yes, sir, I do. I haven't been listening to you like, for two months, for, I'm sorry, six months or seven months, and uh, every time you say something, I look it up on the Internet, and you're 100% correct. Well, I'm, 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 I'm probably 97%, but God bless you. I get a few things wrong, and I wish I was wrong about everything. I wish I was delusional. But look at history. I mean, I know their plan. Here, here's the issue for listeners. Almost, as I said yesterday, 95% of this stuff or more is public. It's all public. They said 15 years ago that all pills, including over-the-counter, will have RFID tracker chips in them under law in the future. They said all medical devices will have chips in them. They said all breast implants will have them in them. Guess what's being announced today? The pills are going to have the chips. The breast implants are going to have the chips. Everything's going to have the chips. All products are going to have the chips. So the NSA can track everything in real time. And they're coming out with fake manhole covers everywhere that are actual giant spy grids to irradiate you and suck in all the data. I mean, it's beyond any science fiction movie you've ever seen. By the way, that's Wired Magazine. All the new light bulbs coming out are actual data transfer systems spying on everything you do. Big Brother. Mainstream media. Government cover-ups. You want answers? Well, so does he. He's Alex Jones on the GCN Radio Network. And now, live from Austin, Texas, Alex Jones. Do you know what Agenda 21 is? It is a planetarily adopted United Nations World Government UNESCO treaty to shut down all human activity not controlled by less than 100 mega corporations. You will not farm, you will not have your kids carry out the trash, you will not have them do chores, you will do nothing. I was talking about Minnesota where they make you get a license to have a canoe or a license to have a paddleboard or a surfboard. That's now spreading all over the country. And uh, they informed me and I looked it up during the break. Sure enough, I wonder why I see the cops whenever I'm on Lake Austin or something fishing with friends harassing people in canoes or two-man kayaks. They're writing them tickets because for two years there's a law that you've got to have a license and registration to be in a canoe. I mean, what a dirtbag country. What? And, and, of course, the cops think it's for money for them. Uh, it's all about wrecking everything. And don't worry, you will be a pathetic slave, all of you that serve the system if this continues. Uh, let's talk to Mike in New Orleans. Uh, you're on the air, then we'll go to Adam. Go ahead, uh, Mike. Mr. Jones, God bless you, sir. You have inspired me to give to the public a tool that is going to spread your information that is brilliant. Wow. If I could have you and your listeners go and look at Roving Info Wagon at Indiegogo, I have a wagon with two big screen TVs live streaming Internet access to the streets of the French Quarter of New Orleans. I'm on the streets five, six days a week. Spreading your message. Wow. It is a 
It is a brilliant concept. I want to see these in every city. It is, it, they can be a protest. They can live stream uh, uh, interviews. By the way, let me just interrupt you because yesterday I talked about uh, Ryan Crowley and his wife that I ran into on the hike and bike trail with a newborn baby. I'm not just going to say that I'm every day talking to pregnant uh, women or women with babies about vaccines. I'm going to start videotaping, and I don't care if it saves people. I didn't videotape this, but I got their name and then looked them up on Facebook. And the reason I'm doing that is so other people will see, because people model. My, my, my five-year-old saw me get a glass of ice water this morning and saw me slam the whole thing, so she slammed the whole thing. People model behavior. We all need to go out, warn the public about the New World Order, about vaccines, GMOs, gun grabs, open borders, and then put it on YouTube so other people see it and model it. I, I, I never told the final reason I had the epiphany that I can't just, you know, when they push loyalty, store loyalty cards on me, I give a speech, uh, or whenever uh, the cop pulls me over, I give a speech, or whenever anything happens, I give a speech, I'm battling, I'm alive. That's what a free person does. But your idea, I see it, you're already doing it. You should shoot video of you talking to people in New Orleans, put it on YouTube, we'll link to it and your Indiegogo. And yes, everybody else should do stuff like this with my info, Oath Keepers. Oath Keepers was being attacked three years ago on Fox News. Now they've got top Navy SEALs on there endorsing Oath Keepers. That's up on InfoWars.com and Fox agreeing with them. I mean, it's really starting to happen. We're becoming the mainstream. Tell us about uh, what you've been doing, the response you've gotten, sir. Oh, it's been brilliant. Uh, you inspired me when you did your Paul Revere. I built the prototype for this, and I went out on the streets, and I had a video screen in the back of a cart so I could go ahead and show people uh, your program and your – your. Um, and I, over the past year, I have talked to active colonels on the street, people with NSA top-secret clearance on the street. The revolution's on the street. The idea was this is when I was a young man and the revolution was going on, we didn't have the internet. The internet was, was the street. You know what? I got Gerald well, Salente coming up, but if you can hold, I'm going to tell him about you at the bottom of the hour when we go back to calls, and I will introduce you, and you can talk about us for a few minutes with Gerald. How's that sound? God, that'd be a dream. I'd love that. All right, Gerald's going to be on for the next hour, and we'll go to you at the bottom of the hour. You can tell him about this because this is it, folks. That's why I have the magazine, the digital magazine. It's all about getting on the street, getting active. You're the leader. You're the resistance. You're the hope. You're the answer. You are the future. And, and just what he just said, when you're out there, I'm always bashing government all day. I think government people are more awake on average than even the general public because they're in the middle of it. They know I'm telling the truth. My friends, thank you for joining us into the second hour of the live Friday transmission. We're here Monday through Friday, 12 noon to 3 p.m. Eastern, back Sundays, 4 to 6 p.m. Central Standard Time. The news websites are InfoWars.com and PrisonPlanet.com. Here's some of the headlines. Dollar slips as Fed worries continue. Treasury yield falls as investors focus on effects of government shutdown. No, they focus on the effects of our $16 plus trillion dollar debt. 70 trillion in unfunded mandates, 60 plus, 600 plus trillion in derivatives that they've signed us onto that aren't our debts. It's amazing how in Greece and Italy and everywhere else they turn it around to where the debts of these mega banks somehow become our debts. And we're in financial trouble, not because we have a giant debt. Obama says raising our debt doesn't raise our debt. Remember that quote? doesn't raise our debt. It's those that don't want to raise it that endanger us. We're not in deep enough debt. We're not taking enough heroin, the heroin dealer said, is the problem. And I guess once you're on heroin, you do feel sick if you don't take it. Can we get off of the fiat currency? Because we get to pay for it later in evaluation. Now, we've got QE Unlimited continuing. We've got the new Fed chief in there, who's the architect, supposedly, of helicopter bins policy. So she's saying she's going to accelerate it. But again, they give the money to the insiders first. We get all the side effects of it. And is it any wonder that Chase Manhattan came out a few days ago? We published the report, DrudgeReport.com picked it up. Went viral. People said it couldn't be true. There's no way they're going to limit foreign money transfers. There's no way you can only have $50,000 in cash total activity a month. 
the average restaurant does more than that in a couple weeks or even in a week. Even you know, taco shops do that in a month in, in raw cash. This is going to devastate them. That's the plan. And other banks, we've got this report coming out over the weekend or Monday. Other banks now are actually telling people, get ready for this, that it's coming from the top. These are capital controls because you notice the money can come in from other countries. It can't go out. And Gerald Salente, when he saw our report, he's been all over the news giving his insight and analysis on it. The top trends forecaster, editor of the Trends Journal. And, of course, he comes on every month or so. We appreciate his time and insight. And he just kept explaining what QE Unlimited would do. And he predicted they would continue, just like Peter Schiff did, QE Unlimited, because, well, they can't do anything else. I mean, we're in trouble if we do. We're in trouble if we don't. And so the bankers are going to continue it because it actually helps them. It just hurts us. So we're going to get his take on where we are, then shift gears into the shutdown itself, uh, the, the weenification of the, of the men in this country, and where he thinks this whole, whole situation is going. Obamacare, the giant scam. Uh, Schwarzenegger saying he wants to be president. I mean, the son of an SS officer. Why not? We don't know where Obama comes from. I mean, the Twilight Zone-ness. If this wasn't real, it would be very, very entertaining. So, Gerald, thank you so much for coming on with us. Oh, my pleasure. Thanks for having me back, Alex. Where do you want to start? With the whole chase situation? Yeah, why not? Uh, <laughs> you're going to have to chase them for your money. That's what's coming down. And you know that in our Trends Journal, we've been warning about this now going on the better part of uh, two years, that there would be a bank holiday. And we had that quote. We had that quote from um, uh, Joe Big Mouth Biden as he was campaigning in New Jersey for John the Slime Corzine when he was running for re-election of governor. We know they're discussing holidays. He said we may have to have a holiday. That's right. That was the first thing that Biden said that the Obama transition team was discussing, whether or not to have a bank holiday. The video's there. It's for everyone to hear. So now, as we're looking at this, and you cleared it, made it very clear, that this tapering process is going to have to happen at some point. They don't know what to do. The only reason that the economy is moving along at any pace at all is because of the record low interest rates. And when interest rates go up, the economy goes down. As I've mentioned, I bought one of these historic buildings. I got a 15-year locked in in March at 2.85%. In reality, that's lower than the inflation rate. So when you're looking around the world, whether it's China, whether it's the EU, whether it's the USSA, they're all devaluing their currencies and flooding the market with it. So now we go back to the banking issue. We saw with this fear and hysteria another day of, you know, D.C. drama bringing us to the Ed Jovi here of whether or not they were going to raise the debt ceiling. You saw what the banks were saying. So people could say, oh, I knew they weren't going to do anything. It was, yeah, you should have asked Jamie Dimon. You should have asked Christine Lagarde from the IMF. You should have asked the World Bank. You should have asked the head of Deutsche Bank. All of the banks were all making provisions in case the United States did not raise that debt ceiling. There's fear and hysteria running through the entire global financial community because, as everybody knows, all they did was postpone the inevitable. They're going to keep the government agencies open only to January 15th and the borrowing authority to February 7th. So they've done nothing. And, and I want to, again, before I get to the, the, the bank issue, because it's all connected, I kept saying over and over again on your show, in Trends in the News, in the Trends Journal, they would not do tapering. They won't do anything until after the Christmas holidays. Retail sales already stink. You look at the numbers coming in, they're way down. And by the way, Obamacare is going to make it worse because people are now going to be forced to buy 
medical insurance from private corporations, and you saw what the tax hike did just on payroll taxes, even though Obama promised that they wouldn't raise taxes during the elections, that's hurt retail sales. The Obamacare is going to hurt retail sales. They could not afford to hurt retail sales by bringing this, this, this drama out any longer or announcing that they were going to eventually have to raise interest rates, going back to the banks. What happened in Cyprus earlier this year, in the spring, as I said, was the canary in the mine shaft. They're doing the same exact thing by telling people that they only can get $50,000 a month out of their account. Hey, you have your money, but you're not going to get it until we tell you when you can take it out. That's what they did in Cyprus. And as I've also said, they're going to come up with a bank holiday. The reason being, you mentioned the debt at 16.7 trillion plus, 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 however you add it up with the entitlements, the pension programs, and on and on. So how are they going to get us out of this debt? Simply by devaluing the dollar. So when they call a bank holiday, they'll do it the same way that FDR did it, but only a little bit different. The language changes, the scheme's the same. Back in 33, they made you sell your gold for $20.62 an ounce because the dollar was pegged to gold, and that's what the bank runs were about. Oh, and by the way, it was a prelude to the closing of the banks. It happened in Michigan. Cyprus is the Michigan. So what happened was they closed the banks in, 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 in Michigan, they reopened them, and they saw how it would play out. Okay, so now they forced the people to turn in their gold bullion, gold coins, gold certificates at 2062. After the criminal operation, the Federal Reserve got all the dough in, using FDR as the front man, they repegged the price of gold to $35 an ounce which means that they devalue the currency, you lost 70% of your purchasing power. You go back to the Great Depression, you come to the Great Recession, nothing has changed. And undoubtedly, they run the same plays over and over again. Uh, in my article uh, that was on DrudgeReport.com yesterday, my update to Paul Watson's article that got top linked on there, I broke down historically that it's all three. They're going to do bail-ins, Obamacare is a bail-in to the insurance companies and the government. Uh, it's not meant to work. They're going to fine people 5000 a year. Uh, they're going to devalue the currency. They're going to uh, basically do bail-ins. They are going to gang rape us up one side and down the other financially and hold us hostage, just like they've done all the other countries. It's the same gang, as you've said, demanding you do this or we'll make all the pension funds worthless. And all the yuppies will say, OK, go ahead and do it. Go ahead and take part of it. Just don't take it all. And then they'll come back a few years later and take more, more, more till we have nothing. They're experts at this psychologically. So how do we wake people up and stop them? Well, yeah, I mean, you're waking them up and I'm waking up, but the people have to wake up. And as you mentioned the, mentioned the yuppies, you know, I have a line that, you know, liberals are liars. You can show them that everything Obama and everything that they believe in has not happened and Obama backtracked on it. And they'll make an excuse, just like they make an excuse for Obamacare. I mean, this is a corporate scheme. It's a way that businesses and governments don't have to, no, have, no longer have to carry insurance policies for the people that work for them. And we're being, it's, it's fascism, by the way. It's the merger of state and corporate power. That's right. It's, it's being, we're being forced to buy our insurance from a private corporation. I'll tell you what, hold that thought there, Gerald. We're going to come back to you and continue with what you're predicting in the next year. What's scaring me is all the experts that continue to be right that I respect. We're already in a collapse, folks, but they say by the middle of next year, they expect it all to really accelerate. We're going to see if Gerald concurs with that and get more of his trends straight ahead. And then your phone calls at 800-259-9231. You know, for folks that are tuning in for the first time saying, why would government and mega corporations want to do same thing so horrible? Why would they want to wreck the economy? Because their business is consolidating the economy. They see competition as a sin. They see you having your own farmer's market, your own local business is bad. They openly talk about vertical integration. And they want you living like folks do at Foxconn 
Apple factories in China that is beyond slavery. It is forced drugging, forced abortions, uh, suicide nets, mobile execution vans, and the robots are being delivered to replace them. This is an anti-human worldview, and I want to get more into that with Gerald Salente of the Trends Journal, trendsresearch.com. We have links to it up on infowars.com. Gerald, this is a short segment, long segment coming up, as you know, but let me ask you this question. Uh, because you got cut off, I want you to finish your point about the merger of the state and, and, and major corporations being fascism. But then I want you to talk about the state of the world itself and where you see things going into the future uh, with the establishment acting like they don't even care if we know that they run Al-Qaeda, that they run white slavery, that they run the drugs. I mean, everything I talked about 16, 17 years ago and got attacked for is now really passe. And I just, it's, it's, it's surreal to see the most hardcore stuff that we knew was happening now being mainstream news, but no one gets in trouble when Wells Fargo gets caught with hundreds of billions of drug money. Well, exactly. And, and you, as you were saying, you know, it's, it's all these multinationals, vertical integration. And, and the, there's this new Asian trade pact that they're negotiating as well that will turn more of America into slave landia as well, where people could get those part-time jobs, have no insurance, no benefits, and not enough money to live on. And then they'll have to go on to food stamps and other assistance. So we'll be subsidizing those corporations as we already do with McDonald's, the other fast food chains, and Walmarts. And as I, I've been saying, this is not globalization, it's multinationalization. There are no mom and pops anymore. The stores are all closing down. As you pointed out, they make it very difficult for the small farmers, the farmers' markets, everything. They have the highest and harshest, uh, uh, they impose the harshest regulations and terms on us. I believe it was your site that I went to, uh, either today or yesterday, with the, what, four-year-old kid that brought a toy gun into school? I mean, those are the people they crack down on. So, in looking by, in going back to this as well, when I talk about fascism, four words, four words prove it. Too big to fail. In capitalism, there's no such thing. In fascism, there is. They're taking our money and giving it to the big banks, which goes back to the first question about the J.P. Morgan Chase crime syndicate. How about this? They have paid, Alex, almost $16 billion worth of fines and litigations, legal fees and litigation, since 2009. Just this week, they got slapped with another $100 million. So I'm starting to think about this. I know that they make a lot of dough. But even in the real world, $16 billion is a lot of cash. And these banks, as I see it, don't have the money. And you look at, yeah, you pick up the paper. Here we go. Financial Times, city group hit by slowdown in bond trading. You look at Bank of America's numbers coming out right after that, same thing. You look at one bank after another. You look at all the people they're la laying off because all the refis and new applications for mortgages are going down. They don't have the money, and you well know my experience. So you ask me, what could the people do? Here's the deal. I talked about John the Slime Corzine. The SOB who stole my money took it out of my segregated account. I wasn't a trader. I was using the money to purchase hard And you assets. accurately predicted that he would not get in trouble. Two years later, no criminal charges. No criminal charges. He's probably holding fundraisers for some other Democrat. Then you got right over, you saw what happened in Cyprus, and I told the stories Oh, oh what happened to me on 9-11 when I tried to cash out my CDs. I couldn't because... Wall Street was closed, and CDs of financial instruments traded on Wall Street. But don't worry, Mr. Salenti, we can assure you that Fleet Bank, fully banks, yeah, Fleet Bank is out of business now. One of the big guys bought them out. Number two. Number three, I went to the banks when financial situations were getting a little scary, and I wrote about it in the Trends Journal with HSBC and Key Bank. How they busted my chops and wouldn't let me have my money until I had to put on a scene. And I'm saying to everybody out there, if you don't have your money in your pocket, it's not yours, Jack. That's right. Stay there. I want to break down and tell the story of what happened to you because I've sent my wife to try to get a couple thousand out. And, she, and literally, even at a local bank, they traded her like a criminal.
and it was a business account. We had quite a bit of money in there. And she said, really? This is how you're going to treat me? I mean, this the, the criminals have taken over. We'll be right back. Stay with us. We're going back to Gerald Salente and then your phone calls on different subjects that he can comment on here in a moment. Also want to ask Gerald what other important trends he's uh, looking at and what he sees happening by the middle of next year. So many other experts are saying it's going to get a lot worse before it gets better and uh, solutions of ways to you know take action against this. I think it's key for everybody to become activist and journalist and to resist the corporate press. We're going to talk about that in a moment and with a caller who wants to talk to Gerald who called in earlier I put on hold because his point was so interesting I wanted to get Gerald's take on it. But first off, we're listeners supportive. We're not like NPR or MSNBC that gets bailout money or stimulus money or tax money. We're supported by our AM and FM affiliates carrying us, uh, our local sponsors on those stations who we thank and who people should support, our national sponsors are mainly mom and pop institutions, and the products that we sell at InfoWarsStore.com. The books, the videos, the super high quality supplements at InfoWarsStore.com. Uh, undoubtedly unique, extremely powerful, really special, unique, nascent iodine that Dr. Group talked about yesterday that we're unable to find anywhere else, so it's sold out. You can pre-order so that more is coming in the next few weeks if you want to be first in line to get it. InfoWarsStore.com, and we have the best water filtration systems, the stainless steel uh, systems, the Pro One systems that I research and I use personally. We have those at the lowest prices with promo code WATER. You get an additional 10% off the already lowest prices at InfoWarsStore.com. And you can ask about all the specials or ask any other questions uh, about different products, books, films, uh, all the Patriot apparel to help spread the word and meet like-minded liberty lovers, all at InfoWarsStore.com. You can find the magazine to subscribe or give a gift subscription or buy it in bulk at cost, InfoWars Magazine. It's all about taking action, the non-GMO Heirloom Seed uh, Center, largest selection out there we found, the lowest price, the InfoWars Seed Center, InfoWarsStore.com, or call 888-253-3139. We're also about being citizen journalists, so we have the, again, check it out, lowest price on high def with an 8 gig uh, thumb drive that comes free with it or memory stick. We've added that, the lowest price, the other competitors are 150 bucks on average, we have the same system for $99.95. It hangs over your uh, rearview mirror, looks just like a, a regular rearview mirror, but actually has camera, high def camera and a high def TV screen. Uh, when you hit a button that pops up and turns the mirror into a TV screen. Just simply amazing, $99.95. We sold out of these a few weeks ago when the first shipment came in. We've got more in, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Absolutely essential to protect yourself from bureaucrats, you name it, and document everything. So get the hidden dash cam today. InfoWars, store.com or 888 253 3139. And InfoWars, the nightly news, prisonplanet.tv. It's a platform for all these other great people who have their own platforms, but synergistically we work together, like Gerald Salente and Ron Paul and Jesse Ventura. Uh, and Ben Schwan, and just countless other great people. It's a good thing there's not just Gerald Salente. It's a great thing that, you know, that, that there's not just Alex Jones. It's a great thing that there's not just people like Rand Paul speaking out. There's more and more libertarians, classical liberals, true uh, conservatives, constitutionalists, just freedom lovers getting past the labels. We're anti-corruption. We're anti-globalist mafia. We're calling for a return to sanity, to local community, uh, not the fake globalism, the multinationalism, but the true, you know, true power of nationalism working together for real globalism, for real free trade, not fake rig trade. So be sure and go to trendsjournal.com or trendsresearch.com and subscribe as well and sign up for their free uh, alerts as well uh, because it's such an invaluable magazine. And it's something the average folks can read, but it's also real brainy. So whether your br brother's an auto mechanic or a brain surgeon, uh, the Trends Journal, and I suggest you get back issues. They've got very affordably when they're not sold out to, you know, give them back issues from a few years ago. It's like getting in a time machine, uh, you know, reading it back then and now it actually happened. That's what really seems to wake people up that I've predicted so much, that Gerald has predicted so much. And, and so now that people are listening to us because our credibility is at all-time highs, it's time now more than ever 
to warn people about what's coming and to shape the future battle space politically so folks know exactly what we're facing. Gerald, other points, trends you want to get into, and then I want to take some phone calls. Yes, I, you know, I wanted to follow up on what you, you said earlier about you know, what people could do. How can they wake up? You know, what is it going to take? I would suggest that everyone, it's, you know, it's on YouTube, go to uh, Harry Reid's uh, speech on the floor of the Senate on October 16th. Quote, the compromise we reached will provide our economy with the stability it desperately needs. All right? How about that for a line of BS? If that one doesn't work, how about this? I look forward to working with my colleagues on both sides of the great capital that passed this remarkable agreement. Remarkable? Remarkably stupid. Remarkably nothing. But the prostitutes let him get away with it, which will protect the long-term health of our economy. Hey, Harry, you're a liar. Could anybody say that? Could any prostitute challenge him? This didn't do anything to help our economy. All it did was reopen the government and raise the debt ceiling. But they can get away with it because it even gets dumber than that and more insulting. And avert a default on our nation's debt and allow us to set the foundation for economic expansion. Okay, Junior. Oh, I should say senior. You're the senior senator. How is it going to help promote our economic expansion. You know why? Because now Congress must return to its most important job. And you know what that is, Alex? You know. Everybody out there knows. Everybody knows because when you get up in the morning, this is the first thing you're so happy about for having voted for a Republican or a Democratic gang member. Fostering economic growth and protecting middle-class families. How's that, boys and girls? So when people say what to do, why don't you wake up? Why don't you become a man or a woman? And look at these little clowns shooting off their flabbery mouths, spewing out a bunch of baloney that you couldn't sell at a bar. If you talk like this anywhere to anybody that you ever knew, they would tell you to get lost, but not the American people. Salute the commander in chief. Applaud when your senators and congressmen show up. Don't forget to vote. Election day's right around the corner. Oh, and give money to support your Democratic and your, pol and your Republican criminal operations. That's what's going on until people grow up and get, maintain their courage, their dignity, their respect, and their integrity, nothing is going to change. Because any self-respecting adult that hears McConnell, Reed, Boner, Ryan, one after another, and buys this baloney, they deserve what they get. And as for the international scene, the whole thing is collapsing. That's our forecast as well. Uh, we were saying by the second quarter of 2014, we expect the bottom to fall out. There's, or, or something to divert our attention as it falls out. Oh, look how quick America was ready to go to war against Syria. Our commander in chief, he was out there, right? He was beating the drum. But Gerald, isn't that super good news that, that they had the whole whore media, uh, both the major parties, but it was the libertarian kind of Tea Party folks that helped to a great extent stop that. This is the first time in 220 plus years the British said no. I mean, I think the fact that nuclear war was probably going to happen, most experts agreed, that the, even Dempsey, who's a warmonger, went and told Obama no. I see that as really positive. It is positive, and it's positive for the American people. But we have the sociopaths and psychopaths in control. They'll do anything. Pick up today's Financial Times. It's not in the American press. The Senate is calling for harshest sanctions against Iran. You know, I mean, it just keeps going on and on. And Israel could hit Iran any time, whether you love Iran or hate them. The point is, is it's preemptive. It, all hell's going to break loose in the Strait of Hormuz. 
and it's going to be a great political diversion. I want to ask you one more question and go to calls. I don't want to hog you here, and folks want to ask questions or, or direct comments at you and see what you have to say. Again, Gerald Salente is our guest. I'm Alex Jones. If you just joined us, uh, Gerald, look, I don't claim to be a tough guy, but if somebody hits me in the face, I'm going to hit them back. It's not even a courage thing. I'm going to attack somebody back. It's just, it's just a default position. I mean, I have a chihuahua. If somebody kicks it, it's going to bite them. It's not an attack dog. But I look at the prostitutes, the, the, the term you coined, the dinosaur whores, the term I use, and I see them in hour-long press conferences never asking Obama about, hey, Obamacare doesn't work. When's that going to work? That would be the first question the press five years ago, six years ago would have asked. I see them being arrested, persecuted, and rolling over. In the old days, Nixon barely messed with some press, with some IRS stuff, and the whole media left and right turned against him. Where is the common sense that when a government bully messes with you, you all get together because your instinct is you're going to be a slave if you don't? Where is the instinct? I know where it is, but I want to get your take on this. Here's CBS. They heard a backfire of a car, so the SWAT team responded to the Louisiana... Uh, uh, situation and, and, and evacuated the school freaking out. Same thing happened in another state. Water supply at a major lake uh, in Seattle. Surveillance camera. Police saw a man with friends drinking beer at a picnic. There's just multiple articles on this. You can go read them. He peed on the side. I mean, I just did that at the side of the ocean fishing at night. I, I, I peed in the ocean last two weeks ago. Oh, my fishing. God. Oh, my gosh. It was at midnight. I didn't want to go back to a porta potty a half mile away. I peed at midnight fishing, surf fishing out uh. in the surf. But my point is they evacuated it and drained tens of millions of gallons, uh, saying it would take the surface urine away when there's fish, there's sewage running off. It's this grandstanding. Here's another one. Here, this, this, this is just today. A man dumped his ashes. This is Breitbart. So they evacuated a whole area and a shopping mall because the ashes were so scary. Here's another one. They shut down a large area of San Francisco because of a, a paper bag on the side of the street yesterday. This is the type of hysteria where kids are seen playing with Nerf guns in their backyard and aren't aren't kicked out of school the police come and put them in handcuffs Gerald Salente this is mind control this isn't land of the cowards this is like weenie world like an absurdist joke or something this is why the press won't do anything we are the, how did we turn into planet weenie <laughs> first of all you are a tough guy and in, in, the, in the most manly sense, in the most masculine sense, you don't take anything and you don't give anything in terms of you don't give anybody a hard time. You just call it like you see it and you don't have to believe anybody and you just call it clean and you speak out. And as you said, if somebody pushes you, you'll punch them. Just like if you kick a dog, the dog's going to try to rip your leg off. And number two is that the, I believe it, it really happens in the schools. I mean, could you imagine, I mean, I was just thinking about this. You're going to send your kid to a school where they have police guards? Doesn't that tell you that something's wrong? And they keep teaching us to be submissive, not to fight back. And that's what, and you said it's weenie world. And then you see these cops that go berserk over nothing. And you know, want to, you know, as you, you said, they hear a, a, a car backfiring and they bring in the SWAT teams. And as you well know, you've been writing about it, I've been writing about it, it's the militarization of the United States. And again, as I see it, because of the grand scheme. And that is, these people may be stupid, the people running government, but they're very shrewd. And they know, as we all know, that there's no way to solve the economic problems. Look, I saw it on your site. You were the first to report the mayhem that went on in Walmart when people couldn't cash in their food stamps. Multiply that by tens of millions. Multiply that a breakdown of society. Look what they did in Boston. Again, to me, that was a test. They closed down 100 square miles of Boston, stopped the trains from running between New York and Boston to hunt for a 19-year-old kid. So, again, look at America's most feared criminals of this last year. A 19-year-old kid, Snowden, 
and Bradley Manning. Now, there's three faces of disaster you never want to meet in a dark alley. So you can see how the society is being controlled because they don't want anyone to get out of line. But going back to the prostitutes, I'm going to have Zeke over here, Zeke West, my assistant. You said about, what would you call them, dinosaurs? Uh, Dinosaur media. Dinosaur Media, Anthony Frieda. We have a weekly Frieda as part of the subscription. Wait till you see this one. He just did you a dinosaur piece. Oh, he, wow. Yeah, he, of course, you know, he's a fan of yours as well and writes for the, and does illustrations for us. And um, so he just did a great piece, and, and Zeke will send it to you. But that's, these, again, look at who these tough guys in the media are. Hey, Anderson Cooper, whoa. Oh, oh. Oh, you met him. You sat face to face with Piers Morgan. Ooh, Bob Costas. Look at these guys, they're little boys. They're all. They're all. Look. Look at the facts. We'll get past that part of it. Look at the facts. Look who Obama has as his mouthpiece. James Carney. Where did Carney come from? Oh, Carnival Man Carney. Oh, he came from Time Magazine. Yeah. Obama has more people working with him from the major media than anybody recently in, in history. And as you also saw that latest release that came out, even from prostitutes like the Turlet Paper or Record, the New York Times, saying how difficult and how closed down. Oh, remember Obama was going to make everything transparent? Nothing goes through. Nothing goes through, and everybody gets shut down. Well, they down. now admit, even a New York Times uh, top person said it's the most, most deceptive, closed-door, control freak thing they've ever seen. Exactly. So, again, it's both the weenie and the control. Yeah, so they want us to be weenies while they're armed to the teeth and total tyrants. You got it. We're going to come back and take phone calls with Gerald Salente. We're going to talk to Mike, who's got an idea for citizens to take action. Then David and many others, Jack, Johnny, Debbie. I'll get to everybody. We'll see if Gerald can say five minutes the next hour. Probably can't. We'll find out. TrendsJournal.com. I'm Alex Jones with PrisonPlanet.com. Gerald Salente is our guest. I'm Alex Jones, your host. Ten ways the Obama train wreck is screwing the American people. Soaring cost, assaults on privacy, and the nanny state gone wild. Paul Watson's article just went up on PrisonPlanet.com. I know most of you as listeners know all this, but give this to your average person that's been conned. Gerald, I'll ask you at the end of the interview in about 10 minutes, your take, your prediction on what will happen uh, with Obamacare. But mull that around in the back of your big brain and then uh, tell us what you think at the end of the interview here in about 10 minutes. Let's go to calls. This fellow called in earlier and I put him on hold because he wanted to address the question to you. He has an idea for a, it's not a Kickstarter campaign. What's the name of the other thing? Indiegogo. He already does it in New Orleans to drive around with Liberty information with a, uh, you know, bicycle, I guess you could even charge folks to be carried on it, you know, that has the uh, TV sandwich board on the back. Uh, he, he has InfoWars material, my material, whatever it is, whatever the small business is, whatever. Uh, the, I mean, this is a great idea for business, for politics. Uh, we're going to try to support this fellow. But my point is we need to get aggressive and all of us as individuals become media ourselves and uh, go ahead, uh, Mike of New Orleans, uh, make your point in about 45 seconds for Gerald Salenta so he can comment on it. Yes, guys, I need to You were okay, absolutely okay. right, uh, Mr. Salenti, uh, that it's getting the information to the people that don't know it. And that's why my project does just that. It's live streaming, Internet access to the streets on two 51-inch screens. Solar panel being pulled by a motorized uh, electronic bike. Uh, so I can show your show. I can show Alex's show. I can show documentaries. I can do live interviews, uh, show pertinent news broadcasts, everything on the streets, right where the revolution is, right where it's needed. So we can reach people that normally would never, ever hear. And you were telling me earlier, know. it's it's roving info dash wagon and Indiegogo. Folks, go fund it right now. We need to see more of these around the country. You were telling me you talked to colonels, NSA people. You're saying they're massively awakening right now. Oh, absolutely, Alex. I, three, uh, you were talking about Syria. Uh, three berets were walking down the street, and they stopped, and I, I asked them, I, I, excuse me, if you guys get uh, uh, called to Syria to fight on the side of Al-Qaeda, what are you going to do? They laughed, and they said, I thought you were going to ask us a serious question. We ain't going.
That's the kind of stuff that needs to be seen. That needs to be filmed. People need to know that. Exactly. God bless you, folks. Uh, give us an update. Shoot a YouTube video, brother. I want to see what you're doing. That's how you really get attention. Great job. We're going to break here in a few minutes for a final segment, Gerald, but this is a short segment. Yeah. That's the type okay. of action we need, isn't it? It's brilliant, and it's unique. And that's what people say, you know, give me a solution. I don't have a solution. I'm only doing what I'm doing. I'm one guy. You're one guy. We come up with as many ideas as we can. That's what it takes. It takes the individual spirit to become creative. It's brilliant. Uh, 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 could you imagine 100,000 of those on the street? It'd, it'd be over, and that's what you always talk about. The power of the renaissance of the individual, that's the American dream. Any, anybody that says they have all the answers, follow them as a con artist or nuts. Anybody that knows the real world says you're the answer, folks. Start thinking like that. That's right, and, and that's exactly at the renaissance, and this is the perfect example. It's creating your own future rather than letting someone else do it for you, because if you let them do it for you, you know how it's going to end up. You're not going to like Briefly, it. Briefly, tell us about the new Trends Journal coming out and how people get it. Well, you know, it's fit, that's what, it's uh, 52 pages. It's all totally different, full color. And, of course, we do trends in the news every night. It's Trends Journal TV, the real news like your news, taking other issues and showing us into Trendsresearch.com. Stay there. Back in 60. Big Brother. Mainstream media. Government cover-ups. You want answers? Well, so does he. He's Alex Jones on the GCN Radio Network. And now, live from Austin, Texas, Alex Jones. Ladies and gentlemen, final segment with Gerald Salente. Then I'll cover some breaking news. And then we have a doctor coming on with some really important information. We'll continue with your calls as well on this Friday edition. I'm going to be doing the Arm March down in San Antonio uh, tomorrow, 10 a.m. So hopefully you'll join us down there. Support the First and Second Amendment. Let's jam in some calls here. Will in Connecticut, uh, you're on the air with Gerald Salente. Go ahead. Oh, hey, how you doing, Alex? Gerald, big fans of yours. I uh, just wanted to say that I went into my local Chase Bank yesterday to uh, to see what was happening after I watched Anthony Gucciardi's report on the whole thing. I've been a longtime Chase customer, and uh, they called me. They really didn't know what was going on, as Anthony had uh, portrayed in his uh, in his piece there. But I just wanted to to let you guys know and everybody else. I guess that you know, it's it doesn't seem like it's really any big deal because I have what's called a classic Chase checking account, and uh, those aren't being affected. It seems like, uh, it, what, from what I understand, it's a way for Chase to just charge more fees and make more money. Sure, sure. Listen, listen. here's the spin they're putting out. It's just like Bank of America wanting to charge you $5 to use your debit card. The, notice they let the money come in with the wires not go out. This is for people that have big accounts or legacy accounts they're leaving alone now. But the big banking associations have said globally they're moving towards phasing out cash. That's the issue. But thank you. I want to get Gerald's take on that. Go ahead. Well, just look at the news. It just came out. The debt, the debt now, the, the country, they just added $300 billion. We're now over $17 trillion. And as I mentioned, the banks don't have the money. And I've, I've witnessed that firsthand as I tried getting it out. Well, look at how they call it a bail a bail-in. Oh, we're going to take 40% of everybody's account to give it to foreign banks in Cyprus. It's no big deal. They call everything a no big deal. And, and as it may as well be true what they're saying, that, oh, it doesn't affect anybody. These are, the, these are the steps they take. They take incremental steps under the radar, if it had it not been for people like you and others, uh, that... Um, that saw this coming, and they, they'll, then they just all of a sudden snap it on to us and say, oh, well, we had these laws in place already. So again, the debt ceiling is now, and look how, look how slimy those D.C. snakes and weasels are. Oh, you like to call them Republicans and Democrats, all you loyalists. How they waited till after this whole drama was over to announce dun, 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 it's not 16.7 trillion it's 17 trillion plus. oh now it's going to race up really quick yeah. and oh and now they're the chinese are devaluing us 
a country run by communists with suicide nets and execution vans. They, the, the communists, not their good people, but their government, gets to now lecture us because the foreign banks have maneuvered us into this like, like we're Greece or like we're any of these countries. The, and, and, and notice with Greece, they went through all this too. They did the IMF World Bank bailout. They did the increased taxes. And it wrecked them worse. And the IMF and World Bank said, we were wrong. We didn't know that would hurt you. When their own internal documents said... The, the, the restrictions they put on them are meant to wreck them more. Hey, Alex, pick up today's Financial Times. You know what one of the stories is? The Troika is great. A, great. a great term for the mafia. The European Commission, the IMF, the International Mafia Federation, and the, um, uh, who's, oh, the ECB, the European Central Bank, they just announced to Greece they need more austerity measures. <laughs> Just Kids are kidding. starving to death in the streets. Yeah, more they... austerity. Mm -hmm. Keep giving it to the people. Leave them with nothing. It's slave landia worldwide. And and most of the money that Greece is paying is to foreign banks to bail them out. And then the, and then and then the head of the IMF doesn't work and is tax exempt. She says they should work seven days a week. More, more. Let them eat cake. Gerald Salente, thank you so much, my friend. Thank you. We'll be right back with more of your calls, breaking news, and a special guest. I'm Alex Jones. Jeh Johnson. That's his name. Uh, to name Jeh Johnson. He's naming him right now. He's got him up on the stage. The net, and I'm not joking. He's Jeh Johnson. Not making fun of the name. He says, eh? It's like, hey, eh? What's the name? I said, Jeh. You said, eh? No, I said, Jeh. It's like a Monty Python skit. I said, my name is Jeh. And you're like, eh? What's the first name? Jeh. Yeah. So uh, I shouldn't joke, though. Uh, he's very happy about the vertical integration by the foreign banks, the occupation. He is the uh, former Pentagon um, globalist operative, uh, integrating a lot of the Pentagon takeovers, the economy already. And if you watch any federal agency now, they're headed up by former Pentagon people. I mean, this is the military takeover, the junta. But he's a team player. That that's what matters. He'll 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 have the TSA grope your children's genitals all day long. Meanwhile, the TSA document came out yesterday on Infowars.com, and it is a public document, but no one seemed to notice it, where they admit it's not about terrorism, it's about conditioning the public and checking us for crime. So the body scanners, all of it's a total fraud. The people running the government run Al-Qaeda. Homeland Security runs Al-Qaeda on record. It's all a total fraud. President Obama is expected to nominate former Pentagon lawyer yeah, Johnson, as the uh, next Homeland Security Secretary, ABC News has learned. And well, let's go ahead and hear some of uh, Obozo, the destroyer. Oh, they're dumb. Let's just go to the media celebrating it. Okay, re rewind a little bit because I want folks to be able to hear just the. I want people to hear, yeah, be able to talk or Jay or whatever his name is. The White House has uh, largely ignored such calls. The Department of Homeland Security has been without a Senate confirmed leader for six weeks. And from the start, some Republicans were calling the administration to swiftly nominate a new secretary, but they ignored that. Well, now they're giving us yeah, the night that says yeah. So let's go ahead and go to him. Here. Deeply appreciate the terrific job that she did over the last four and a half years. Running Al-Qaeda. I want to thank uh, Rand Bears for his service. Running hundreds of billions stolen in, to foreign banks. Uh, as acting secretary after Janet left. Janet helping oversee Thanks the money laundering that the big banks now get in trouble. Her team. We've done more to protect our homeland against those who wish to do us harm. That is the crime. We've strengthened our borders. We've taken steps to make sure our immigration system better reflects our values. Totally wide open. We've yes. helped thousands of Americans recover from hurricanes you, you said and tornadoes. You've million dollars to floods illegal aliens and, and fake returns so they can and deposit it. And we worked to clean up a massive oil spill in the Gulf as well as address a flu pandemic. By the way, Homeland Security now, if, Johnson, if you run any type of business, right person to continue this important work. literally, I expect to From wipe your hind end. You'll have to have a Homeland Security person there to sign off on national security. I mean, team. anything, and setting up a corporation, again again, uh, the everything. They, they are in it. The feds are in your business, taking the data, using it against you in a criminal operation. They are criminals the running our government. As Pentagon's, as the Pentagon's top lawyer. Uh, he helped design and implement many of the policies. Well, he that looks have kept like I don't know safe, Jay's heritage, but he looks like he might have some African in him. So I think that's probably the reason to put him in there because it's racist now. Uh, when I directed my national security in fact, team I'm coming out with a new coffee about how our policies. We can fade him down. Uh, work and how we make. I'm coming out with a new coffee um, that's actually from Chiapas. It's similar to the um, similar to the. 
No, that's not who we're coming out with. We're not coming out with that. Yeah, no, it's similar to that. No, but it's similar to, uh, they're always trying to help me when I can't remember something, but it's similar to Guatemalan coffee, but even better. And again, I'm all about really actually helping the individuals down there. It's going to be fair trade directly from the folks in the mountains there in Chiapas, Mexico. It's super high quality. And I realized that we designed this bag about six months ago, but I got busy and hadn't made the big bulk purchase. You only do it like once a year from the big co-op to get enough beans in here to have a few months supply to even roll it out because it is such a special coffee. Uh, and I realized the bag I picked months ago, six months ago, is the brown paper bag classic organic style. It is organic coffee. And I realized, and I actually nixed it. I said, I'm going to be politically correct. It will not be a brown bag because that's racist according to uh, Seattle. Actually, we decided a black bag, a flat black bag looks better. So we are ditching the brown organic style bag uh, just because I like the black bag better and so did the rest of my crew for whatever reason. But we did realize that's good because it wouldn't be allowed in Seattle. That is racist. Of course, sterilizing people in mass in Africa, carrying out all sorts of criminal activities worldwide, um, just engaging in mass sterilizations, Poisons in the vaccines, uh, brainwashing the general public. Uh, none of that's a problem. Uh, troops using DU, that's a death sentence. None of that's a problem. But if somebody in Seattle is seen urinating uh, on the edge of the lake, they shut down the reservoir. That's CBS News. And CBS News reports on this with a straight face. I mean, there's animals, fish defecating, urinating in it. Uh, there's sewage runoff into it, you name it, then it goes through light water treatment before it gets fluoride and other deadly poisons added to it. But they shut it down just so they can grandstand. I mean, anywhere you live now, the paper bags you know, on the side of the road, they shut down highways. Everyone rolls around in fear, groveling 24-7, foaming at the mouth uh, because of the just mega danger, the absolutely horrific, horrible earth-shaking danger of the devilish paper bag. We're working on getting our guests. They're having some Skype difficulty. They keep having difficulty. I feel sorry for this guest. We've moved them twice, and now their Skype's not working. It continues to mess up. It's fine. We'll have them on next week. Four will be the charm. Four tries to get this guest on will be the charm. The first two, my fault. Big breaking news. We didn't get them on because this is the expert, the medical doctor guy that really developed so much of the amazing research that we found to be incredibly accurate. So we're going to be talking about that in a minute. But the big announcement has been made, my preciouses. U.S. debt jumps $300 billion, top 17 trill. So it was supposed to be a debt increase above 16.4 to 16.5, 16.6. But don't worry, they gave you a sweet little surprise. Because remember, earlier this year for three months, they didn't... Um, they didn't ever, you know, tell you what it was. They just said, well, we can't do a debt increase, so we're not going to fear monger and try to lower our credit rating right now. We're going to do that later after we get a blank check. Uh, we're going to, uh, you know, just freeze it at 0% increase, even though that's not true. We already live in Alice in Wonderland. Why not? But now that they've got until February, the debt ceiling they passed is unlimited. So just expect it'll probably be $20 trillion by the time they get us into February because the, the mission is... Break America at all costs. As Obama said, can we find that from two weeks ago? If you can, it doesn't matter. Where he said, increasing the debt is not increasing the debt. Everybody knows that. It's like if I made $100,000 a year, hypothetically, and I went and I tried to spend $300,000 a year and got leveraged into debt, and then I said to my wife, she said, man, you're spending too much money. We'll never pay all this back. You're, we're going to go bankrupt. And I looked at her and I said, darling, increasing our debt is not increasing our debt. What's wrong with you? What is, what is happening with you, darling? Lamb chop, lemon pie, cupcake, sweetie cake. What, what is going on here? You're an extremist. You need electroshock therapy. Kind of like the Affordable Care Act isn't double your rates, totally rip you off, lower the quality of care, giant scam act, just, you know, fraud act. It's Affordable Care Act, the Patriot Act, gutting the Bill of Rights, gutting the Constitution, gutting what the Founding Fathers fought for and every veteran and civil rights activist since then. None of that is an issue. None of that is a problem. No, it's patriotic because we say it's 
patriotic. Remember what Obama said. We've played the clip many times. A debt increase is not a debt increase. And I agree with that. I want to be an establishment person. Doesn't matter if all the studies show aspartame is what alcohol when it breaks down at 87 degrees and your body's way above that and it brain damages you, but it's highly addictive, so they're putting in almost all even sugar gums and candies now. Just wave a magic wand and everything will be all right. We do have our guest, so we're going to go to break and come back with him. Were we able to find that clip where Obama says raising the debt limit isn't raising the debt limit? Yep, yeah, oh, so we found a news article, I know, but we have that clip, too. It is, it is bombshell, because I know that sounds crazy, so later in the hour, I will play that clip if you're a new listener, and that sounds like quite a statement to have them saying that uh, raising the debt limit uh, is not really raising the debt limit. And why not find the old clip where CBS News says mercury is actually good for your children's brain and is a new vitamin? You have the mercury is good for your brain? Oh, let's just go out to break with that then. Here it is. Then we'll come back with uh, our uh, special guest. And then we will uh, break down some really serious, important news. So we'll come back, I guess, with that. Uh, but look, uh, bottom line here, ladies and gentlemen, is there is a war on reality going on right now. There is a war on common sense going on right now in this country. Did you say you had the CBS clip? No, yep, yeah, yep, yeah, ready for it. Go ahead Mercury and go to that. containing vaccines may help not harm kids, according to two new studies in the journal Pediatrics. There have been widespread concerns that mercury-based preservatives in vaccines might impair the neurological development of children. These new studies suggest that the opposite, that the preservatives may actually be associated with improved behavior and mental performance. So there you go. I don't like to make these claims and not have them, but I'm starting to understand if I was to give my child a vial of mercury, even if they could vomit most of it up, they would probably kill them. But that, I guess that imp improves mental performance on planet Bizarro because for the globalist, if you're dead or brain damaged, that's the performance they're wanting. So I guess the Patriot Act is patriotic for the globalists because their patriotism is total tyranny. I mean, the Legion of Doom, that would be patriotic to have no freedom. It's kind of like where you have the Legion of Doom having a trial of the of the good superheroes because they're good. So I need to get my mind wrapped around this. Mercury's good. Debt is not debt. Giant checkpoints. Martial law is freedom. Stay with us. All right. In the last two, three weeks, you've heard me, well, in the last few years, you've heard me talking a lot about it with medical doctors, nutritionists, scientists. Talk about how important real iodine is, nascent iodine, natural forms of it, whether it's from seaweed, Himalayan salts, you name it. And how the power structure knows this. And we've had a lot of questions from listeners. So that's why we've had a series this week uh, with several experts on pharmacist Ben Fuchs, uh, Dr. Uh, Ed Group, and others. But we've got Dr. David Brownstein, uh, who's a holistic family medicine, but he is a medical doctor. And he's got a whole bunch of different uh, degrees from the American College, the Advancement of Medicine, uh, a bunch of awards. Uh, he also, of course, I'm not going to go through where he attended. You can look him up on his website, drbrownstein.com. But the reason he's on with us is that he's really uh, the granddaddy uh, of, of really uh, popularizing the, the, what was known 100 years ago, that iodine is so key. And they used to put kind of the toxic version in the salt, but at least they knew that you needed that. When you don't have it, the fluoride comes in. So this is about the battle against fluoride more than anything. So this is a short segment. We really appreciate him coming on. Long segment coming up. But how did you begin to really discover how important iodine was, doctor? Because you've now become quite famous, and a lot of other medical doctors and others listen to you. You talk about what it does with arthritis uh, and so many other uh, issues. Uh, and, and, and so many things that the establishment really doesn't want people to know about. So thank you for coming on and tell us about your awakening and some of the things that, uh, that you've discovered because then I see all these mainstream studies and stuff out there too backing up what you're saying. Well, thank you for having me on, Alex. And uh, I, I didn't quite know I was old enough to be a granddaddy, um, but uh, I started looking at patients uh, holistically about 20 years ago after treating my father who was my first holistically treated patients, 
And I found that my father, who had a 25-year history of heart disease and continual angina and seeing all the best doctors out there was on 10 different medications, when I looked at him holistically, he had an unrecognized thyroid problem. And when I just got his thyroid working better, you know, his 25-year history of angina went away. He, he felt better. He looked better and acted better. And I started looking at every patient from that moment on for hormonal and thyroid problems. And ultimately, I came to find so many patients with thyroid problems. I started searching for an underlying cause of why are so many patients having thyroid problems. And about 12 years ago, I came to that uh, I did a study of iodine, and when I started looking at my patients and their iodine levels, I found that over 95% were significantly lower, low in iodine, and when I started uh, rectifying this with using the right kind of iodine, these patients started to get better from a variety of problems, including thyroid problems and breast problems and ovarian, uterine, prostate problems, and we'll get into all that discussion, but that, that's how I started, and you know, now I've been treating people with iodine for, you know, over a dozen years and seeing the great results with it. Now, obviously the power structure knew about this. Why do you think they've actually tried to keep iodine out of things? You know, that's a very interesting question. And the power structure did know about this, and that's why they added salt in the 1920s to prevent the goiter epidemic that was occurring. And... The, the interesting thing was after they, you know, the, the, the iodization of salt was hailed as one of the first public health miracles in the United States government, and it was. It, it really effectively treated a problem that was, a, that was a, you know, occurring at epidemic rates. It treated it cheaply. It treated it safely. Um, the, the interest for iodine waned after that because iodine is not a patentable substance, and big pharma started to make inroads after World War II. And really, they were only interested in patentable substances, and they, they, the powers that be thought that the goiter epidemic was cured with the iodization of salt, which just wasn't the case. And then it, things got worse in the 1970s the, when radioactive iodine began to be used in medicine. Radioactive iodine would only work if people were iodine deficient. It doesn't work if the iodine receptors are saturated with iodine because the radioactive iodine just passes through and doesn't bind anything. So the powers that be mandated that the flour products have iodine removed from them, which used to be in all the flour products, and put bromine in them, which is a uh, toxic halogen, and it's a competitive inhibitor of iodine. And it, that's what really started driving the iodine epidemic we're seeing, you know, uh, 40 years later now. And um, that's why I think we're seeing so many more thyroid problems and breast problems and so on and so on. DrBrownstein.com, invaluable site with videos and audio and all the big studies out there. The reason we're really harping on this, folks, is I'm trying to bring you solutions. And this is one of the biggest, and it's right there in the gourmet salts and things like that, and even better with things like uh, the product that you know, we've developed with Dr. Group, obviously, but others that are out there as well. This is something that people need to know about. That's why we developed Survival Shield. We'll be right back. I mean, when you know about Arnold Schwarzenegger and all the horrible things he's done to people forever and how he's anti-gun, anti-family, pro-open borders, a total liar about everything, a total scammer in business that's come up over and over again, working with Ken Lay, you name it, and the energy scams in California, what a nightmare to have him lobbying in New York. That's in the Associated Press and other publications, page six in the New York Post. He's lobbying to get rid of the 22nd Amendment so he can run for president. We need to post in this article we have on Infowars.com my segment from the three-hour film I made that's on YouTube, uh, Martial Law, 911 Rise of the Police State. We need to show that 20-minute segment on Schwarzenegger and what a threat to the republic he is. That can be found on YouTube. Alex Jones exposes Schwarzenegger. I'll probably bring it up or you can probably just find a segment. I'll, in fact, I'll find it and give it to the guys because I made it seven years ago. I want to put that in there to get that back out there to folks so they know. The gay porno mags, I'm not saying that's, you know, a bad thing that he was in gay porno mags. I'm just saying they'll use that against him. He can't be president, obviously. Uh, but that's not the big issue. The dad's an SS officer. You're like, well, maybe, you know, he's not a Nazi. You know, don't, don't blame him for his dad. 
he had would dress up in SS uniforms. This came out in People magazine. He was best friends with the former number five guy in the SS, Kurt Valtime, and said, quote, I don't care if he's a Nazi. I love Kurt. So there. I mean, I've got and black people are not humans. I mean, th these are all quotes on record. That's why he bought Pumping Iron when the DVD was going to come out, because it had the outtakes of that. I like Hitler. I admire him. In fact, he told Rolling Stone that, so that's on quote. I mean, my point is, because he's an establishment dirtbag, they won't talk about him. But if you're Rand Paul and don't want Obamacare, they call you racist. Oh, I want freedom. You're racist. I like Adolf Hitler. Oh, you're not racist. Oh, you want people's guns. I mean, I am just so sick of Arnold Schwarzenegger. I mean, I, oh, man. I mean, what a total drug addict piece of garbage. I mean, give me a break. Excuse me. We have a medical doctor here, Dr. David Brownstein. been doing all my research on what is the best types of iodine. My research just continually comes back to him. He's the big granddaddy of it. But it turns out he just rediscovered all the stuff that was already known that I guess big pharma and folks don't want you to know so that you, I guess you're sick, so you got to go to them. Uh, but he also covers vitamin B12 and so much more. Great looking website too. Uh, but look, I didn't get him on. But in fact, months ago I wanted to get him on. It's taken that long to get him. Survival Shield from InfoWars Life. Yes, we sell it. It's the best nascent iodine out there according to all the experts I've talked to. It's what I take. And I've been taking it two months. I started taking this. I was like, my gosh, I've got to private label this and put it out. I've sold so much of it. It's all sold out. They're making more. It'll be here in two weeks. You can pre-order at InfoWarsStore.com or InfoWarsLife.com. But the issue is it's amazing. And the, what it does for my brain clarity, you name it, everything that Dr. Brownstein talked about and that I read about and I saw in his videos, I guess even six months ago when I was piddling around trying to become informed, is, is, is really been accurate from my own personal experience. So, sir, you're here. You've been holding. You've got the floor. Give us the medical studies, what's going on, what's happening, and just why you say that along with vitamin B12, vitamin C, and things, uh, you know, together with the iodine and the proper type of iodine, it's just really, from my perspective, the holy grail. You know, Alex, out of all the things that I've seen over 20 years of practicing holistic medicine, iodine is, gives the biggest bang for the buck. Iodine is an essential new element for our body. If we don't have enough iodine, we won't live. It's concentrated in the glandular tissue of the body. And iodine's main job in the glandular tissue is to maintain the normal architecture of the glands. When I say the glandular tissue, I refer to the breasts, the ovaries, uterus, thyroid, prostate. What are we having problems with in our country right now? Glandular problems. We have one in seven women, women with breast cancer, one in three men with prostate cancer. We have epidemic increases of ovarian and uterine problems. And certainly we have epidemic increases of all the thyroid problems, autoimmune thyroid illnesses such as Hashimoto's and Graves' disease, hypothyroidism and thyroid cancer. What's the relationship between all these diseases that are increasing the epidemic rates? I say the relationship is iodine deficiency. Over the last 40 years, our iodine levels have fallen over 50% according to the U.S. government's own studies. During that same time, we've seen rapid increases in all those illnesses I just mentioned. And I say that we're not going to get to the underlying cause of these problems with more mammograms and more PSA tests. We're going to get to the underlying cause when we start asking the right questions. Why are so many people suffering with thyroid, breast, and prostate and ovarian and uterine problems? And I say it's nutritional and hormonal imbalances. And one big piece of this puzzle for all this stuff is iodine deficiency. Now, Doc, again, by the third hour, I get wound up. Uh... And so I'll interrupt you if you stop. I'm going to give you the floor to really roll and give everybody a presentation because you're a hard guy to get on. You're the, you're the grand poobah, the uh, head honcho of the resurgence of uh, the healthy types of iodine. So I want you to roll through the studies, everything. You've got the floor. All right, I'll take grand poobah over granddaddy. So that, that'll take. <laughs> um, so I've, I've been looking at patients for 20 years and trying to help them achieve their optimal health. And I can assure you it's impossible to achieve your optimal health if you don't have a properly balanced hormonal system. And I can assure you it's impossible to have a properly balanced hormonal system if you don't have enough iodine. Iodine is concentrated in all the glands of the body, and that includes the thyroid and the adrenals and the ovaries and the uterus. And I'm repeating myself with these, but it's important because so many people are suffering from these glandular problems. And most people don't know that if you don't have adequate amounts of iodine, you can't make any hormone in the body. That not only includes the thyroid, that includes the adrenal hormones. 
And a lot is written about low adrenal problems and people need adrenal support and the adrenal glands are your fight or flight glands and you need proper adrenal hormones to feel good and to be able to exercise and to be able to just function daily. Well, I can tell you, I see a lot of people with adrenal and thyroid problems and they can't get their balance if they don't have enough iodine. Now, the government fortified salt with iodine in the 1920s after recognizing the goiter epidemic that was affecting the United States. And that little bit of iodine and iodized salt, it's about 75 micrograms per gram, was enough to prevent goiter in the vast majority of people that ate iodized salt. However, what's happened in the recent years is our exposure to toxic chemicals that pull iodine out of the body has, has increased rapidly. And two of these toxic halogens are fluoride and bromide. And we get bromide, I found that uh, bromide toxicity occurring in every single one of a thousand patients that I've tested for the bromide levels. And in fact, I stopped checking people for bromide toxicity just because I thought I was wasting their money because everyone's high in bromide. We, we are exposed from bromide from multiple sources, from simple things like if you're in a pool or a hot tub that has brominated, where they're using bromine to uh, keep the water clean, there's one exposure. But we're getting bromide in our food from uh, bakery products because the government allows flour to be brominated instead of iodinated. Um, so the breads and pastas and cereals uh, made with regular flour are, are, have bromine in them. We also get bromine in drink, such as Mountain Dew and other soft drinks. Um, and we get bromine in a lot of medical uh, prescription items, such as uh, inhalers for asthma and, and other prescription items where there's a bromine atom in the center of the uh, drug. The, the next most common halogen that is causing problems with our iodine levels is fluoride. And we all know that our water supply is fluoridated even though there are no good studies that show the fluoridation of our water supply decreases cavity rates, which is why they did it in the 1950s. Um, what's not known by most people is that almost every single European country that used to fluoridate the water has stopped because they've realized that fluoride in the water is more dangerous than it is helpful. And they've also realized that there's no difference between cavity rate in fluoridated versus unfluoridated countries. Um, we also get fluoride in in juices and, and any canned food source where they're getting it from a public water supply and using that water as part of the canned juices. Um, it's in baby food and we have become an over fluoridated country. And the, the, this double whammy of fluoride and bromide has really pushed the iodine levels down in our body and, and made us worse. And the consequences of this are this epidemic of breast cancer, fibrocystic breast disease, thyroid cancer, autoimmune thyroid illness, hypothyroidism, and prostate cancer that we're seeing. And I firmly believe that we're not going to get to the underlying cause of these problems by ordering more tests, um, uh, such as mammograms or PSAs or, or and it's, these diseases are certainly not occurring because we have a deficiency of surgery or chemotherapy or radiation out there. It's occurring because we have nutritional and hormonal imbalances. And one of the biggest nutritional imbalance is iodine deficiency. I've tested over 6,000 patients. Well, my, between my partners and I, we've tested over 6,000 patients. We found over 96%, our numbers right now are 96.4% of these 6,000 patients are deficient in iodine. These are huge numbers. The majority of those 96% are not just mildly deficient in iodine, they're severely deficient in iodine. So if iodine is supposed to maintain the normal architecture of the glandular tissue, you can, just, you can just think about what's happening to these 96% of patients who have low iodine levels. You can think about what's happening in their thyroid, their prostate, their ovaries, their uterus, and and you, you can gather that there's going to be illness in those tissues. And until that is being uh, identified by the powers that be, we're just going to keep rolling down the same pathway of spending too much money on diagnostic tests, too much money on therapies that don't treat the underlying cause of the illness. And we're not getting to what's causing the underlying cause of many of these illnesses. And we need to really revamp our approach. And our approach should be to search for underlying causes and nutritional and hormonal imbalances and to really search for what's throwing off the biochemistry of the body that's allowing these diseases to develop. And really when this search begins, things like I, there's more than just iodine out there. And, and I don't feel that iodine should be used solely without, without it being used as part of a holistic treatment approach. So yes, iodine can help all these conditions, but remember if the listener decides that they're gonna take iodine just from hearing me talk, you're gonna displace these fluoride and bromide atoms that are all through your body and your body has to get rid of those, mostly through your kidneys and through the urine. 
And if you don't have the proper nutritional support, you can cause some problems with taking iodine. So iodine should be used as part of I was of about to say, I was about to say, I've been on it two months now, greater mental clarity, lost a lot of weight, uh, had incredible energy. It's like a drug, but two months into it now, I am detoxing big time. I mean, big time. It is really cleaning me out. And I was talking to Dr. Group. He was saying there's a lot of other stuff. What is it? What's the other key? Is it magnesium you're supposed to take with it? What's all the other stuff? Well, the biggest thing that you could take to prevent the detox reactions from iodine is salt, unrefined salt. So in the old days when people got bromide toxic because the medical establishment used to give people bromine because it, it dulls the brain. So if people were were uh, having mental issues, they would give them just bromine to just, just chill them out. Well, Isn't that the same table as, as basically fluoride? That's why we know the communists and the Nazis put it in the water. I mean, this is history. And, and so they put something in there to calm us. It's also very toxic. It's the same halide, group 17 of the periodic table, fluoride, bromide, iodine, and chlorine. And that's why the Nazis use these halides. They use both bromine and fluoride to calm down their populations and to keep them down. But it was also, I mean, I mean, you have the knowledge. For folks who don't know, uh, at the drug stores, they said if your kids throwing fits or having problems, here's this as well. I mean, this was this was across the board, and now they just do it to all of us. So in in the old days when they gave too much bromine, what how'd they get the bromine out? They used to salt it out. So they would give people sodium chloride IVs and oral salt tablets. Well, we we don't have to use uh, so uh, IVs of sodium and chloride to do this. All you have to do if you're going to take iodine, the biggest thing I can encourage the listeners to do is to increase their intake of unrefined salt. And unrefined salt has over 80 minerals in it. When you compare that to refined salt, which has zero minerals in it, it doesn't take a medical degree to decide. And again, here's what's incredible. You're an articulate, smart guy that's been repopularizing this. God bless you. But I mean, I've just read average amount of history, and this is all over the place. They knew what to do with goiters in the 20s. They knew what to do in Africa in the 30s with all the folks that weren't getting iodine. They know now, I mean, the average doctor is just unconscious because the medical model doesn't make money if it's non-patentable. And the drug companies, big pharma, are driving the bus on medicine. And so there's no nutrition taught. There's no basic stuff taught. And that's why I'm not just here selling our off the chart survival shield old nascent iodine from Dr. Group that I've seen it all, I think, amongst the best out there. I'm telling folks, get the gourmet salts that have all the minerals in it. Uh, you know, d just at least do these basics for you and your family. Filter your water, get the gourmet salts, um, you know, get like the survival shield or other high, super high quality nascent iodines that are pure and don't need to be broken down. Um, what are the other things? I mean, I've told it's vitamin C, it's the B vitamins, it's the, uh, what are the other minerals and things that you're really supposed to take? Because uh, I'm forgetting from a few days ago in my research. Uh, your, 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 your memory's not too bad. Uh, the, the other things that help to prevent problems when taking iodine, number one is salt. Number two is drink enough water. You want to maintain hydration. Number three is vitamin C. Vitamin C acts like a strong antioxidant. Um, and, you know, a couple thousand milligrams of vitamin C goes a long way in this case. Uh, B vitamins are very helpful, particularly vitamins B2 and B3, but a good B complex could be helpful for this. And a major thing is magnesium. Magnesium can counter the problems that happen in the thyroid and the breast and the ovaries with too much iodine as, as oxidative stress builds up. And taking, you know, 100 to 400 milligrams of magnesium per what day. What about selenium? Because I've been told by a lot of folks that's key to also take along with the iodine. There's numerous studies that show that selenium can help autoimmune thyroid disorders. Selenium, selenium acts as an antioxidant. Selenium can be can be a part of this plan and and very much help prevent toxic reactions from iodine. And let me let me let me clarify that. I don't see too many toxic reactions from iodine. Um, most people, if they just do the basics, you know, hydration, salts, magnesium, vitamin C, and a little B vitamin support, they won't get any problems when taking iodine. But the system tells us don't get salt, don't have any fat. But all the studies I see. Like I have an uncle who was in a motorcycle wreck, and they told him, and he quit having as many seizures 20-something years ago, start having a, you know, a, a proper fat diet, not trans fat, but like coconut fats and others, but also the fat that's in beef. And that almost knocked out most of his uh, seizures right there. I mean, they know that. So they're saying no fat, no salt. I mean, this is a recipe to have a bunch of invalids. You got that right. Well, we've, we've, we've followed the government recommendation, recommendations over the years. We've lowered our salt intake. We've lowered our fat intake. And what's it gotten us? It's gotten us the heaviest country on the face of the earth. It's gotten us more heart disease than we know what to do with. It's gotten us more cancer than we know what to do with. They're all wrong. That's why I've written all these books on diet, and I've written a book on salt, 
because I find that these things, when they're done properly and done with the right kinds of salt and the right kinds of fat, have tremendously positive effects on people. Doctor, what's the best salt? I mean, I know you don't have stock in these companies, but of all the hundreds of gourmet salts, what do you want? Just a wide spectrum Himalayan, or what do you want? I have no stock in any of these companies that I'm going to mention. So I've tested three brands of unrefined salt in, uh, a few times each. And I've tested them for their toxicity levels. I've tested Himalayan salt, Celtic brands uh, salt, and Redmond sea salt. All three salts have tested clean with a good mineral content with no toxicity. Um, out of those three, I think they're all very adequate for what I'm talking about. I don't see a big difference between the Hold three. Hold on, tell us the best though when we come back because I want to know. I want to know for my children. It's dollar fades on Fed worries. Why does a private bank run our whole life? Shows how captured we are. But at least the average American now knows the Federal Reserve is private. That's half the battle. This 100-year anniversary is coming up the 23rd. China may step in and push for alternative currency. Yeah, push for the globalists that want to move us to the SDR. And the debt is threatening Christmas. But there is no debt. Obama said that there's no such thing as a debt increase. I mean, increasing the debt doesn't increase the debt. We're joined by Dr. David Brownstein. And he is a medical doctor, one of the leading experts on what thyroid does. But doing the research, there is just so much information on this everywhere. In the five minutes we've got left, sir, I'm going to do a little bit of overdrive for listeners about the Second Amendment march in San Antonio at the Alamo tomorrow. So, folks, stay with us for that. Other points people need to know about this. I mean, uh, well, finish up with testing those salts, which one was best. But bottom line, you're talking, go to the store, five bucks, get a big thing of this, put it on your kid's food. There it is right there. I don't own any stock in it either. I just want the healthcare system not to go bankrupt and to not have all these people sick. I mean, hyperthyroidism in women is epidemic in the statistics, but everywhere I go, I see middle-aged women with swollen throats. No one's telling them that they've even got iodine deficiency. You're, you're right on the money. It's, it, it is occurring at epidemic rates. And, um, you, women should know, well, women, women and men should know, you can't get an autoimmune thyroid disorder unless you're iodine deficient. Um, unfortunately, conventional medicine is under the myth that iodine causes these illnesses. Well, if iodine were causing these illnesses, we'd see them declining over the last 40 years as our iodine levels have fallen over 50%. What's happened over the last 40 years? Autoimmune thyroid illnesses have increased in epidemic rates, all of them, uh, from Hashimoto's to Graves' disease, and, that, and then we throw in thyroid cancer all increasing why these iodine levels are falling. It's, it's pretty clear what's causing this. And, you know, a big piece of this puzzle is iodine deficiency. And their answer is have even less salt. In fact, I've been seeing some of the new guidelines. Uh, they're, they're saying you don't really need any of it. I mean, next they'll say you don't need water. You know, you know Alex, uh, I wrote my book, Salt Your Way to Health, because a, a nutritionist wrote an article in the paper. She was asked a question. Does anyone need, is there any difference between refined salt and unrefined salt? And she said, no, there's no difference. They're equally high in sodium and need to be avoided. And that article irritated me enough. I decided to write my book about it. And when I lecture about salt, I always give her credit because, um, you know, I show the article that she wrote and thank her for it because it irritated me enough to write that book. But salt's the second major constituent in our body next to water. We need proper hydration. We need proper salt. And we need adequate iodine levels. And I think those are doing the basics in people. And I, I say that you can't achieve your optimal health unless you have hydration, unless you have enough salt, and unless you have enough iodine. Those are just the basic things. Well, I mean, I know this. I, I can eat some salty food when I'm exhausted and suddenly have a ton of energy. When I used to work for a summer on a golf course, uh, you know, the folks after work that did that professionally, they'd say, hey, take some of this, and I'd bang back some of that flavored salt. Even though it was crud salt that didn't have all the minerals, I would suddenly, you know, rush off of it. My body was craving it. Absolutely. Well, we crave salt because it's a necessary ingredient in our body. We shouldn't be limiting salt. There's no studies that show even limiting refined salt, which is a toxic substance, has any benefit. If you limit salt in your body, did you know, Alex, that your increase of, you have a rapid increase in heart attacks, you have a rapid increase in cholesterol levels and LDL cholesterol levels. Oh, I know. Look at heart disease goes insulin. way up when they get rid of the salt. When the heart is the most electrochemical part of the body next to the brain, it's got to have it. They're running out of salt. You, well, you know better than I. All the studies, the marathon guys that drop dead and they go study, they ran out of salt. They keep, they keep our, they want us to keep our salt levels low, I believe, because it causes so many problems in the body from insulin problems to lipid problems to obesity problems and heart problems. We have all these drugs to take for these problems. That's why they want us to keep us low in this. But people are smarter than that. 
And doctors should be smarter than that because doctors study biochemistry. And if you study biochemistry, you can realize very quickly that it's probably best not to use drugs that poison enzymes and block receptors. It's best to use natural things that support the body's biochemistry, like salt and iodine. Dr. Brownstein, you're amazing. Hope to have you back soon. Thank you so much. We'll be back in overdrive. Infowars.com. Thank you, sir. Infowars.com forward slash show. Thank if you your station doesn't carry it, got some key announcements coming up. Free video Visit and audio GCN feeds. Infowars.com forward slash show. In the final equation, I do a lot of radio and a lot of TV. Some of it comes off as eloquent, informed. Sometimes it comes off as ridiculous. But in the final equation, I'm a real person. And I have deep, deep, deep goodwill towards humankind. Goodwill towards man. I want you to do well. I want you to be successful. I don't like getting ahead at the expense of somebody else. But I absolutely burn with fury, anger, quite frankly, hatred at those that do try to dumb people down so they can control them. I'm a fan of humanity. I'm a fan of knowledge. I'm a fan of empowerment. I'm a fan of true community and coming together and helping each other and true sustainability to have a sustainable future and true globalism, countries working together, not a global corporate multinationalism, as Gerald Salente called it, feeding on humanity and dumbing humanity down and creating a predatory world based on fraud and deceit. And I began to think the last few weeks about the open carry armed march that's going to kick off in less than 24 hours at 10 a.m. I guess that's about 20 hours away. At 10 a.m. in San Antonio, Texas, tomorrow. I've covered armed marches. I've never really taken part in them uh, because I'm there to cover the people that are involved in it. But I will be taking part in the armed march tomorrow because unlike uh, many cities that don't have unconstitutional ordinances saying it's illegal to open carry a rifle, uh, San Antonio does have one. So this will be another one of my true civil rights actions, just like going and sitting at a lunch counter uh, in the 1950s or 60s demonstrating against uh, segregation, or just like uh, Gandhi marching to the sea to gather salt when you weren't allowed to gather salt, you had to buy it from the British government, back to the subject of salt. Salt was money thousands of years ago. They always want to control our resources, and our number one resource is our right to self-defense, our right to be a man, our right to be a woman, our right to be strong, our right to defend ourselves. And so I want to say this. It is the most basic of rights to be able to defend yourself. It is the absolute cradle of not just civilization, but of humanity. And everywhere where they've taken the guns, they have much higher crime rates. The places where you have the people taught in the use of arms, then you have the lowest crime rates. In the areas where the arms have been taken, you have the highest crime rates. I know our general listeners know that, but the dumbed down, already domesticated public doesn't know that. They hear a backfire go off, they call the cops. Uh, they see their neighbors loading a gun in the car to go to the shooting range. They call the cops. They're ignorant. And we have to openly bear arms to show them that it's still a right and is fundamental to break their conditioning so they understand it's a fraud when they see made-for-TV movies where people get arrested for having guns. Those movies were always set in Chicago or New York or D.C. It's all a, a, a huge fraud like the billboards everywhere saying, report illegal guns in your area with an image of a revolver to create that perception. So just as the Revolutionary War, and this is the most important point I'm going to make, began in 1775 and then kicked off 1776 when the British came to confiscate the firearms at Lexington and Concord, and just as Colonel Travis and others fought against Santa Ana when he came to take the firearms and enslave the people, we are going to have an armed revolution in this country unless we openly act now and exercise these rights and totally win for the Second Amendment self-defense culture. So we're doing this to stop bloodshed and to stop another physical war for the right to defend ourselves. But America and Texas were born out of the right of self-defense. And we're trying to be true Americans. So stand with us tomorrow at 10 a.m., Outside the Alamo, I'll be there, and I hope to see you there.
This is the heart of liberty. You need to be there.